Why, hello. I am here. I'm here a couple minutes early. Let me just hang out. I just, I had to, I had to set everything up in a particular way. So since I got that done early, I can um, start a little, a couple minutes early. So hi, you guys. Hi, Linda. Hi, Gail. I just got some stuff. I'm just doing basic shit right now, getting ready to go. I am sitting here with my brother, HC3010, nice little machine. Lisa helped me get all the, Lisa helped me get all the cameras and the lighting set up. Once I turned the machine on, I did, I did not deal with, oh, I pushed it up a little bit. I may have just disconnected the light. Let's see. <laughs> anyway, I decided to stop in. I'm all, I was already early, so I thought I'd say hello a little early. Say hi. See how everybody's doing. I think I've got a. I think I've got a good setup doing going on here. It's a little. It's a lot podunk, but I've got a piece of. Actually, yeah, that's just a piece of flannelette over the back here, so that the. If the background is too dark, then you can't see the needle. But you're gonna to want to be able to see. Oh, pardon me. You guys know the drill. Peggy's drinking pop. What happened here? So this machine, I gathered up everything that comes with it, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is all the original stuff that came with it. I kept it all. I kept it all together. Hi, witchy wallflower. Hi, Nanny B. Nanny B is in the house. She is the one who sent me all that lovely fabric that I got to show off last night. Oh, you have to start supper. Aw, that's too bad. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta time them what's best for me. So, but I hope you enjoy the replay. We're not. I don't know. This is, this is gonna be a fun one. This is gonna be a fun one. I thought. I know there's some people that want to understand sewing machine basics. So I thought we, since, since, yeah, those are awesome fabrics. I thought I would start with a bit of sewing machine basics since you know we want to give people time to, to wander in anybody who is able to catch a live we want to give them a few minutes to wander in settle in do whatever so i thought i would just i thought i would start just by okay and that's what else that's okay so what else that else so today i am working with the brother hc 30 30 10 i'm going to be trying to, i'm going to try my best to beat the shit out of it and not completely destroy it but let's just uh take a few minutes and go over what come if, you, if you're buying a basic if you're buying a this is a but this is a basic budget friendly sewing machine so if you're buying a basic budget friendly sewing machine or you happen to have one that you're afraid to get started with what can you expect i'm over, I'm, I'm watching the chat from over there the, the camera's over here the other camera's over on this side. And if I really get desperate, if I really get desperate, I can turn on the um, the camera that comes attached to the laptop as well. Anyway, so here we go. So this guy is the brother, right? And when you first when you first get this out of the box, what you're gonna get is I believe that I believe that was not. I don't think that was attached. I believe I had to just snap that into place when I got the machine, but I can't remember. It's been a while. So what you're going to get is you're going to get the machine. It's usually going to come with one needle already in the machine. Nowadays, they tend to. Yeah, thank you. Lisa and I worked on this a little bit last night. I'm still going to be moving. I'm still going to be moving things around. I've actually, I've had, this is Lisa's camera. I borrowed Lisa's camera for the day because that's a, it's a, this camera does web, does streaming beautifully and has amazing look how like my once i turn the machine on you'll see i haven't got the machine actually i'll turn the, i'll turn the machine on right now no i'm not going to turn it on screw you guys you guys can wait okay i'm so kind so you're going to get you're going to you're going to get this in the box right in the box there's also going to be wrapped up two cords one is your power cord that's the power cord and the other is the cord that goes to the foot the foot's down there Foot's down there, really obvious. All sewing machine feet look very similar. That's my Janome foot. I know you guys aren't going to see it very well. That's the Janome foot. That's the um, 
brother foot, and that's a piece of scrap paper that didn't make it into the garbage. Okay, so uh, it's an amazingly clear setup. Now, sorry for the vertigo. Okay, so when you get your machine, you're going to pull it out of the box. I believe, like I said, I believe this piece here has to be snapped on. I can't remember. It's either taped down or I have to snap it on. And no two machines are the same. There's going to be there's going to be lots and lots of differences, but the you know it, lots and lots of differences, but it's going to be very very similar. It's similar enough that it won't matter. So then you're going to get a CD that's going to be an instruction video on what to do. You're also going to get a book. All machines come with the book. Not all machines come with a CD. My Genomi doesn't come with it. I don't think my Genomi came with a CD, but it comes with access to an interactive website. My Singer machines came with a CD. Okay. Then you're going to come. Whoop, don't do that. There we go. Then you're going to get a screwdriver. This screwdriver is what you use for loosening these, loosening the uh, for the needles. This is supposed this 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 was designed for somebody who assumes that women can't use proper screwdrivers. My my singer comes with a screwdriver that looks like this, and my genome is very similar. So you're going to get a screwdriver. These are the these are the covers that go on this guy up here to keep your bobbins from sliding off. If your machine has a automatic buttons. Then you're going to get this. Oh, hey, free spirit! If your machine does, if your machine does automatic buttons, you're going to get some type of gadget that looks like this. My Genomi one is it handy? It's not handy. My Genomi one is in like four pieces that you have to stack up before you can use it. They can be really complicated. This is a darning foot, which you use for quilting. As long as you're, if you're planning on quilting, as long as your machine comes with one of these, you can do a lot. You can do most of your quilting with what comes with it. A few other a few other feet for various purposes. We're going to be abusing that one a little later, so we'll set it aside. Best way to break a needle is to put on the wrong foot. Okay, and these are some other foots. This is for this goes with your button. That's for making buttons. Anyway, I'm not going to get. I'm not. I'm not going to dive too deep in this. This is a this is a piecing foot for quilting, or for just. If you need to put, if you need to press two pieces of fabric together and then zigzag them onto each other, that's for that. I forget which one this is for. It's another type of, well, it's another type of sewing foot. And that, okay, okay. Want to know how often I've used this machine? That's a piece of loose styrofoam from when uh, I, is still stuck. That's a piece of loose styrofoam from when I unpacked the machine. It's like I've used, we used it three or four times and couldn't use it because the one bag that the two my two pocket bag, my two pocket bag when you're finishing up the one part of the bag it has to go through sixteen layers of fabric and it just doesn't want to do that. This is where's that guy go? I don't think I ever did find where it goes. This is for if you are using a second, um, every now and again, like if you're using a twin needle, then you have to have, your, you have, to have a second um, thing of thread on the top. Two threads, one bobbin for using a twin needle. So it's there. Oh, it goes right here. It snaps. Okay. Okay, I'll be putting the camera down and not not making you guys crazy. So this one here snaps over top of the um, bobbin winder. On my machine over here, I believe it also snaps on top of the. No, on my okay, on my on my machine over here, it doesn't go there. It go, it's, this is this is not. They are not. They are not very often interchangeable. But on my machine here, it would go here. So. We will not be using that today. We will not be using that because I don't have, oh, I do have twin needles handy, handy. So, did I do, did I do? Was it the machine I moved or was it the thing I moved? So, we are gonna turn the machine on. Let the mayhem commence. 
So when you turn the machine on, it takes a few seconds. And what this machine does, I'm going to turn it back on. It starts, this machine starts at zero, zero. Unfortunately, zero, zero starts with a needle off to the side. Zero, one starts in the middle. This is one thing I didn't particularly like about this machine is that, come on, you're supposed to be over there. I didn't, we don't, we don't want to do it like this, but we technically do. Anyway, come on, come on, come on. Oh, we just draped this over because we knew we were going to have to move it. So I'll get the machine off. So when you turn the machine on, instead of going to there, in the center where it's supposed to, it starts off at zero, zero. I don't know why. See? Pops itself over the side. Great way, great way to wreck your machine, but anyway. Okay. So now let's let the mayhem commence. What did I do here? I had the camera in a better spot. I had the camera in a better spot because it wasn't showing the computer before. What did I do differently? I moved something. I moved something the way I shouldn't have. Oh, well. We knew that was going to happen almost immediately. The only thing that I'm worried about is keeping that little piece of fabric draped over because I want you guys to be able to see the needle. Um, another little feature I like about this machine, it's got the, it's got the, it's got the uh, automatic threader. Let's bring it down with this finger. Automatic threader. So it's got a little hook on this side, a little hook there. And then when you bring it down at the very back right here, right there where my fingers is a little gadget that will come forward and snag the needle. Those are those are actually really awesome. Never buy a machine just because it has one in it. Never, never, never do that. And then this back here, come all the way back here. So this is the needle threader up the front. Come all the way back here. And that is how your um that is how your um button how your button foot works we may or may not this is the boring part this this is this is just the board this is just the boring boring part this is what a basic budget machine should have in it it should have it should come with an automatic threader but not, like i said never make a purchasing decision based entirely on this because they only last for as long as they last and it's not worth putting time energy or money into getting them repaired if they get screwed up by the way, are you guys hearing me okay? I did not double check my I did not double check my microphone. So if I'm a little fuzzy or if it, or if the you if this if the sound goes in and out as I turn my head, let me know because I'm pretty sure I can fix that. Anyway, we're gonna put all this stuff away. We're gonna put all this stuff away. We're gonna keep that foot out. We're gonna put that away. We're gonna keep this is not the screwdriver that came with the three things that we are going to keep out. We're going to keep out that. Always keep the stitch ripper that comes with your machine. And we're going to experience why. Yeah, Nanny B, oh my God, the needle going to the side would drive me nuts. I've always forgot that it does that to start sewing. The machine would end up with wings. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, okay. This is not a bad beginner machine. Um, if you look at this, if you look at this, I just put away the I just put away the feet, and I think I might put a different foot on. Well, because that's the wrong foot. That's why I'm not putting it on. Okay. If you look, if you look at this, the center is like right there, right there. So yeah, the needle is off center by almost a quarter of an inch. That is a big, big problem. Um, I'm not sure why this machine does it. It's, it's its automatic function. And because I'm using multiple machines, um, remembering which machine. Okay, if this is if you buy a machine like this and you're just starting out, you'll get used to it. You really will. You will get you will get used to having to uh, Yeah, yeah, you'll get if, if that if this is what your machine if, if this is if this is what you're starting with you'll get used to it because you, let's face it whatever you start with that's the thing that is the thing that you will get used to but if you are not used to it and you buy a budget machine or and so, even some really expensive machines do this so if you're buying a machine and this is what it does you'll that's a learning curve to get used to I don't like that because I I'm using so many other machines now one thing I do like about this um, machine. 
Let me just get this out of the way. I took my uh, I took my um, knee lift off of my off of my other machine because I've got to move stuff around. I took my lean, knee lift off, but I don't want to screw around with it now. This machine here has the big plate here, right? And the whole thing comes off. Now, on a regular machine, on a on a regular machine, you're going to have a screw like here and here that you have to undo in order to get it off. This machine has a screw here and here to take off the plate, right? But let's go back here. So this is a solid plate, which is this is a solid plate, and it comes off. I can't do it without I can't do it without screwing up my setup, but. I slide this, I slide this tray out, and then there's a little catch underneath. I just snag the catch and the whole thing pops up. This is a snap in, this is a snap in, snap out, which I really like because you're not over there with a the screwdriver all the time. This is both. This for a beginner machine, this is an amazingly awesome feature, which we might be taking advantage of a lot today. For a beginner machine, this feature, I may need to uh Okay, let's take that out. So you take that out. Come on. There. Sorry, I don't have any nails right now. So you just snag that piece, snap, push that down with your fingernail. Take this off. Push that down with your fingernail and you can get, I don't know if you guys can tell how dusty and dirty that is. Well, we might as well clean it. Well, we got it. So that will let you come in here and clean stuff up, which... This was not intentional, but the makeup brush is awesome for cleaning your sewing machine. Do not, do not, under any circumstances. Oh shit, is there an echo, guys? I forgot to double check my microphones. That one. Was there an echo? Is it gone now? Okay, anyway. Okay. So. When you're cleaning your machine, any part of your machine, I like using makeup brushes because they are really, really helpful. And one thing that you will find, I should have opened up my other machine and got it ready so I can do comparisons, but some some of these machines you um, can put a drop of, some of, some of these machines you can put a drop of oil in them. This one you cannot, you can tell the difference because let me just let me just fuck around. This is this is fuck around day. So let's just do fuck around day. There. Okay. Oh my god, this is really fuck around day. What did I do over there? Okay. Yeah, you know what? I had to my basically when when you set this up. When you set up two cameras, it runs two microphones, so you have to just make sure one of them is muted. Not a big deal. If it ever happens again, don't be afraid to tell me, um, because it just means I forgot to click a single button. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm moving things around as I go. Okay. So now this is this is my. That's everything set up over there where I need it to be. This is the schmancy machine, okay? I took the thing off, and there's there's the catch there. You make sure your foot is up. Just pop it. Don't wreck your shit. I always just, I always just get in. I'm trying not to, uh, I'm trying not, oh, my God, I haven't, I'm not even showing it. So I just get in here and get a little second push. What did I do? Oh, that's right. Did I got to push it a little bit further forward? There we go. I just get in here and give it a little extra push. We'll double check on, yeah, we'll check on that machine. This machine, the, the foot is up, the foot is up, but you can make it go a little higher. So then I just do that, pop that out. Only thing I want to show you guys here is that this machine, okay, here's, here's the difference between the two machines. I can't, I've got, I've got multiple um, brushes. This machine here, see how the center has that little spot right there? That's where you put a single drop of, you can put a single drop of oil in that spot. And it'll, and it'll give you the instructions. It'll be in your instruction book exactly where to put the, 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 the oil and exactly how much to use. 
And this machine, oh, this machine shows it a little bit better than that machine does. When you're poking around, when you're poking around cleaning your machine, see like right here, I don't know if you can see it, there's a spring. There's a little spring right there. There's a little teeny tiny wire right there. When you're cleaning a machine, light touches. You're not actually, you're picking up the dust and that's it. You're not, so so don't, you know, lightly touch, none of, none of that, none of that. Just light brushes, take your time, go over it 20 times if that's what you have to do. Okay, so now that we've learned what to do, let's get back over here. So this machine, this machine is, you don't oil this machine. There's no hole, oops, let's get, get in better. There's no hole here. If there's no hole here, it means you don't, um, you don't oil it. But what happens is this has a little hole in it. This guy has a little hole in it right there. Because if you are, if you decide to be diligent about your oiling, you can carefully drop your drop of oil through the hole down to the bottom, right? So you can carefully drop your oil through the hole down to the bottom. Well, if there's no hole there, because it this here lines exactly up with the center of that thing. If you can't oil it, you're just going to be dropping oil into that cup. So double check. Double check. If, if you have experience with sewing machines, double check anyway. Let me just pop that back on. Double check anyway to make sure that you are not putting the oil in spots where it's not supposed to go. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull apart the top. I'm not going to pull apart the top and do the, and do this part here. That, that could almost take a whole video all of itself. And I, I was debating on a video where I just take all three machines, line them up, clean and oil them. Cause I've got three different types of machines, right? Oh, you're not that late, Trisha. Don't worry about it. So I, I'm just doing, I'm just, I, I just thought I'd take a few minutes for a basic tour of sewing machines in general. And this machine in particular, while we're waiting for people who are interested to show up. So, I actually like using the big one, but yeah, don't, don't push, don't press, don't use a lot of pressure. And my, my two favorites are canned air or, oh, it's not handy. There's a little, there's, there's this little thing you can get that does the same effect as compressed air. But anyway, so this second, this plastic piece is a bit of a lifesaver when you can get them. I don't think I would get a machine just to get it because it is a bit annoying to deal with. It's a bit annoying to deal with because you're not just not used to it. But if you have to take off the entire thing, then you get back in here with your screwdriver. You just unscrew that and that. Leave that on. Unscrew these two. Whole thing comes apart. Okay. So we're back together now. And we have to do a bobbin because I don't have one yet. It's my white thread. That's not my white thread. Where is my white thread? I need some white thread. My thread drawer is all blocked by by wires and stuff. This is my thread drawer. I just keep all of my thread right here. Okay. So now the mayhem is about to start because we are going to make a bobbin and start breaking shit. Oh, I need one more thing. I already know. For, I already know for a fact that we're breaking needles today. These are. Let's do it over here. These are organ organ needles, and they're really they're really inexpensive. They're they're really inexpensive. They're oh, there's my. I've been looking for this. I've been looking for that one for a while because I couldn't find it. I just found it now because that's the one I've been using. I'm using one that used to go in the garbage. Anyway, 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 I will get the camera fiddled. Oh yeah, you'll you'll break needles. There's absolutely no way around it. Um, so I'm going to bring that back over. I think. Oh shit, shit. Okay, I'll tell you right now. Don't don't lose these because if they get beat up or mangled or whatever, I just forgot to put it back into this machine. And I should have showed you, I should have showed you side by side. There are differences. Um, like, okay, on a Singer, all, all Singer ones are pretty much universal. The Brother ones look to be the same as a Singer one. 
So I'm going to switch this over because we're just we're gonna we're gonna do a bobbin right now, and I might as well go big for that too, right? Oh my god, that is like poorly, poorly focused. Why is that not focusing? Wants to focus now. Okay, so we're just doing we're just doing a bobbin, and this for this one, everything's up top, so I can just kind of pop it through. So I gotta I gotta open that first. I just shove my needle, shove it through, give it a twist. If you try to, you can, a lot of people will just take and put it on here and let the, uh, and let this push it through, except for when it does that, the glue, the glue from the paper will start building up. I just, um, I just pop it with the scissors, find it, find it, find it. We're just, okay. I'm going to use, I'm going to be using black thread and white thread together so that as things happen, you could, we can all get a better look. So that just goes there. Always put the, always put your doohickey on to hold it in place. And they say that whatever one you use should be bigger than the whatever one you're using should be should be bigger than the bob should should be bigger than your thread. All of these guys, there's my instructions right there. Tells me exactly where to put things. Okay. All newer machines have this and it's in the book. So I'm going to bring it down here. Under here it says, I'm literally just following the diagram. Keep light. Okay. If you do this and then just try and put it through with one hand, it, you're going to have a problem. Always, always just keep a tiny bit of tension here. Okay. So it wants me to go on this side, then back under that little screw, do, screw do, doohickey down to here. And let me get a bobbin. Okay. And then it used to be for older machines that they would want you to just hold it on and do a few wraps by hand. We don't do that anymore. Do, 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 do. So how is everybody anyway? Um, oh, I got a, I got one of the good ones too. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's got a hole there. But it's also got a, sl a slot on that side. The slot on this side, the little slot that's on that side, you can barely see it. But the slot that's on that side is it opens right up against um, the barrel part in the in the um, bobbin. It'll we it'll go on tighter and have less chance of a problem. So always put if if you have those slots, always use the slot. Make sure that make sure that it's facing up. Do 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 do. Give it a slight pull. You don't want you don't want to have super insane tension. Oh, and it's still on camera. Okay, I don't know if you guys saw that. Snap it into place. Okay. And just go. And what you can do, do not cut, do not hold this thread. Do not cut it until you've gotten enough. Do not cut it until you've gotten enough loops of fat, loops of thread over it that you know it's going to hold in place. And what you can do lightly, don't go crazy. Oh, this is weird. It's so slow. I just I just use my fingernail and just push it up ever so slightly. You don't have to apply any pressure and then trim it off. This is gonna be weird because I can this machine is already way slower than what I'm used to. Oh, it's not bad. And then you just wait and wait and wait and wait. Now I can read some comments. Oh, Marion's here. Hi, Marion. Who else showed up with a, who else showed up when I wasn't looking? Yeah, Gail says I bet the, I bent the needle threader part that goes to the needle eye before a seam ripper is good to nudge it back into place. A seam ripper, craft craft pliers. I've put I've put it back in place. I mean, I love I love the automatic spreaders that's fine i just will not um buy a machine just because that's not the only thing that will sell me on a machine all my machines have them though so <laughs> okay i'm still holding it down right it automatically stops see you obviously don't want to just run it oh hello and so long <laughs> Okay, so if you if you're distracted and you hold it down while you're getting something else ready, it will just 
the sound changes to give you a hint, but if you leave it going, you're not going to break your machine. Um, this one here does not. Yeah, this a lot, some of these machines will have a little thread cutter up here somewhere. This one has a thread cutter right beside it. So just pull it off, snip it. There you go. Needle threaded. Unhook it all from that stuff. I always start over just to make sure. Okay, I always start over. Do we want white thread? We want black thread on top, actually. So I'm going to switch this out. I am pseudo. Okay, don't forget, I've got different. Oh, okay. See you on the replay. See you on the replay, Nanny B. Thanks for stopping by, though. Okay. I am not using white thread. I have organized chaos behind me here, so it's always like, what am I going to do? Let's go get the let's go get the the machine. Let's go get the one that everybody wants to see back up here. What am I doing? Oh, that's that's what I'm doing. Okay. I have been okay. You guys know how I keep losing my sound. The reason why I keep losing my sound is because in order to move the cameras around, I keep I keep clicking. I clicking. I'm clicking the wrong button. Okay, so we left this open. That's so this always goes in. This mm, always goes in the bobbin up. In always goes in with the thread coming off the top. Okay. This one here has a set of this one here has my big fat hands in the way. So this one here has guides and catches. So you take it down under that. I do have to get two hands in there. Under that back up to here, back up to here. If it doesn't, and if you're, and if, when in doubt, when in doubt, I take the entire thing out and start over. And then this just, this just snaps off all on its own. Lines up the right amount of thread in the right way so that it will catch properly when I start. And then, let's see. We'll bring it not going to be the best it's not going to be the best view but that's let's do that for a split second so we get we get we get we get that goes on there same same as i already put it on i just want i want black on the top because i have light colored fabric so again just look on the top of your machine look on the top of your machine you just Oh yeah, look, this is gonna love it if I leave uh, fingerprints on her camera. So look on the top of your machine and what's it gonna show you? It shows you to go there. I don't know if you can see that. There's number four right there. So you I'm gonna take my I'm I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my thread and I'm just gonna follow one. Come on, come on. So one is all one is all the way up here at the top, which you guys are going to be able to see in the little camera. I'm going to take a bunch of extra thread. One goes through that. One goes through that same spot that I put the bobbin. Two is the same spot. That's one actually. That's the same spot that I put the bobbin. Two is to bring it all the way down here. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way. Three is to bring it all the way up here. But what I've also got to do is make sure that my needle is all the way up. Four, four in four on this machine is weird because it just says four. You got to go up and back down again. But what it's not telling you is it see that little see that little teeny tiny teeny tiny shiny thing in there. You just you just go up and make sure it goes behind that back down. Okay, I'm just gonna hang it down while I re reposition it. Don't worry, don't worry. We're gonna break stuff in a second. Okay. I just got to make sure my angles are good. How's that? Okay. You guys are looking at it on a better screen than I am. So are you guys, are you guys getting a good view? I just want to make sure it's not, um, I just want to make sure it's not fuzzy. I know it's probably not ever going to be quite perfect. So the entire threading process, you need to make sure that your, um, you need to make sure that your foot is up. If, you, if your foot is down, it will catch funny, which we might do one of those on purpose. We'll do one of those on purpose in a minute. Okay, so there's a slight, there's a thing there. And it all shows it. It's in the guide, it's in the guidebook. There's where is it? There's a graphic. 
There's a graphic that shows how to do it. Unless I've, I think I may have already taken it off. Some of these are just little stickers. And if the stickers are not on very well, you, you may end up taking them off. So that you just hold it here with between two fingers to get a bit of tension so that it's sliding in there the way you want it to. And let's see if I can do the needle threader so that you guys can actually see what one does. Okay, the needle threader is, that's the needle threader, okay? On this particular machine, the needle threader, you bring it down. You bring it down, but don't, see how you put pressure and it starts to spin? Get it down to here. Use this is this is this is this is hand-eye coordination. Use one finger to hold it down to here. Use the other finger to grab this and get it under that. Now push it the rest of the way and slide it. I don't know if you can see it. It's very it's barely there, but there's a there's a there's a thing right here. There's a piece right here, and you put it in between. And if it catches properly, it pulls your thread through. Thank you. View is good. Okay. That's it. That's it. We are ready to go. Or are we? Okay. If you're not confident, then you're going to take your... Oh, view is good. So the first thing I do is move the damn camera. Okay. That's good. Can you guys actually see, tell the needle from the um, rest of the works? Okay. You know what? It takes forever to do, but once you... Once you okay. Let's let's do it. Let's do it the normal way. Okay, let's get this. Let's get this out right. So once you get the hang of it, you're just going to go like that. You're going to go like that. You're going to go like that and that, and it's done. Because the more you do it, the more often you do it, the easier it becomes. And that's just the way it is, right? So what you do, you don't always have to test. You really don't. We're just we're just going to. I haven't used. I haven't. Oh, look at what I did. Look what I was about to do. It's still on zero, zero. So this one, you just push it up one. Um, every machine's a little bit different on how you do all the things. Um, this one here has got a set of numbers. This one here is really weird because it's got some sort of, it's got some sort of a device inside of here. So when this is down, when this is down, I'm using this set of numbers and these are the patterns that I'll get, right? But when this is up, the same numbers will give me different results. So that gets that that can be always double check how your patterns work. Yeah, the the automatic threader. As long as you're not having a hard time threading it by hand, it's not that big of a deal. Like I said, never buy a machine just because it has a threader. And sometimes the threader there is a there is a little teeny tiny hook, little little teeny tiny hook. It is damn near microscopic. That little teeny, 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 teeny hook has to go through the hole in the needle. And if it doesn't go through, it will not, it will not work. It can only work as long as it's lined up properly so that the, um, the, the threader is going through the thing. And honestly, sometimes, sometimes it'll, it'll catch and it'll be out of place and it'll do whatever. And I won't notice it. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with my machine? You practically have to get in there with a microscope. Okay. So. We're good. Where's my needle cut? Where's my thread cutter? Do I have a thread cutter? Does this machine have a thread cutter? This machine does not have a thread cutter. <laughs> That's okay. I can live without a thread cutter. So machine does not have a thread cutter. So you either bring the needle up or you either press, if it's got a button, that will bring the needle up. You bring the needle up or you, sorry, just a second. I want to make sure that, oh, that's right, dude. Camera has to be set up a certain way because I'm leaning forward with it. And if I don't do it right, it's going to topple. There we go. Um, so this is this has got a thread cutter, and it's and you got to pull this, and it's where is it? Where is it? It's back here. It's back there. That's it right there. That's the thread cutter right there. So that's what we're going to be using today. Okay. So going forward, I have okay. Well, here's my here's my let's let's see if I can force it to happen. Here's the first here's the first thing that you have to worry about is going forward. Come on, what's going on? Okay, sorry, I'm oh I'm being really this is my this is not my camera, so I'm being a little bit. Uh, okay, so first thing we're gonna try and fuck up. I don't know if we're gonna fuck it up or not. Okay, 
So when you are doing a machine that doesn't have the thread cutter, when it, the thread cutter will put the thread at the optimum length. If you don't have a thread cutter, then when you're ready to start cutting again, you really should hang on to these. Get these down here properly. <laughs> I'm trying really hard to keep my big fat hands. Out. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way. And all I'm accomplishing instead is to just be my own worst enemy here. Okay. So ideally what you do is you make sure everything's lined up. You get your stuff on here. You really do not want a ton of loose thread kicking around. So you can either trim it or you can hold it. Holding it's usually better. But if you don't, I don't know if I can make this happen on purpose now. I might be able to make this happen on purpose with all this loose thread sticking around. So let's see what happens. Let's see if I can. There's a few different ways I can force this stuff to happen. The machine I'm using doesn't have an automatic thread cutter. Man, I want one. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can get this. Nope. Not going to work. Okay. The reason why they're one of the one of the reasons why they tell you to always be trimming your threads as you go is because these threads, these threads, if they pull into the back, are going to be a problem. They're going to be a big problem. So that's going to be the, you know what? I think the first thing we're going to do is break a needle. Let's break a needle intentionally first because I know how to make it happen. So there is a small little catch back here. And that's all you got to do to change your, that's all you got to do to change your uh, thread. I mean, change your uh, foot. You just, right? So you just lift that up, lift your, lift your foot up, press the back, that fall, that basically just falls right off. We're putting on a button foot for one reason and one reason only right now. Let's see. Come on, get on there. No, we'll do it on that side. We'll do it on that side. No, we're going to. Yeah, we're going to do it right there. No, we're not. We're not going to do it right there. We're going to do it right there. Okay. We're going to do it right there. And we're going to move the needle over. Okay. I've got the needle. I've got the button. I put my button foot on. I put my button foot on because it's got a piece where it goes right up the middle there. See it? So I've just adjusted the needle so it's going to hit. We're going to do it on purpose. Now, a couple of things. A couple of things that I've noticed over time. One thing that people want to do. Well, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do it. What? It's bouncing. Oh, my God. It is bouncing off the foot. It's wedge-shaped. And it's bouncing. Now, how am I going to break a needle on purpose? My God. This thing is not cooperating. Hmm. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. I can, I can still make it happen. What can I do? What can I use? That's not going to go outside of that. Okay. That's... Yeah, it should have went. It should have went, shouldn't it? It's wedge-shaped, though. This foot, I don't know if I can bring it in to show you guys. This foot is a little wedge, has a little, instead of being flat, it's got a little wedge shape in there. Oh, I've got, I've got other feet that I can break. So I might have to go get some other feet, but that's okay. Okay, let's see. Now, what that's going to do is dull the needle and bend it. And, oh, the whole the whole carriage is moving over. Look at that. It's it's. They fixed a problem, and now I like, can't cause a problem. That didn't force it. Give me two seconds. I can force this. Just give me a second. There we go. This is going to happen. I've got, I, I picked up, I picked up a big box of aftermarket feet. There's one. That one should do it. No, that's not too, that's not far enough off to the side. Oh, that one should do it. 
Oh, that one's got a wedge in it too. There we go. I've got, I've got a, I've got, a, I've got a, uh, I gotta leave that one out, and I gotta leave that one. Will do it for sure. These are aftermarket feeties that I use on my. Uh, okay, certain feet. Certain feet only have a teeny tiny hole. So we're going to put that in. Go off to the side. I better be able to make this work. Oh, yeah. It's going to it's gonna hit right there. I don't know if you guys... Oh, yeah. You guys can see it. So it's going to go right there. The, the wedge is there to keep the needle from breaking. And because this has lots of motion... That's, that's exactly why it would be there. That, that makes absolute logical sense for it to be there, but it's not suiting my purposes today. So now I guess I don't, uh, I'm going to put the fabric in. I'm going to put some fabric under, not that I expect it to do anything, but because I, it just gives you guys, I'm hoping it'll give you guys a better view. Okay. Maybe I should come back here a little bit. Maybe I don't want to have too good of a view. If I chip that, if I chip my wife's lens, she's going to kill me. Okay. Error six. To fix error six, turn your machine off, turn it back on again. I'm trying to do it on purpose. You are not cooperating. This machine is not cooperating. Okay. Okay. Let us just manufacture a problem. What happens is over time, even if these error sixes keep happening, even if these error sixes keep happening, eventually your needle is going to start bending. Oops. I just broke one intentionally, but eventually it's going to start bending. It's going to do things. I was hoping to bend it and not break it and then let the machine break it. So eventually it's going to start breaking. And I really, really, really need to keep trying until I break one. I was hoping to bend it without breaking it. So I'll get another, another needle out and see what I can do. Anyway, a machine, a needle breaking isn't the end of the world for starters. What do I want to do? How do I want to make a needle break? I can't make it break. How do I do the, how do I make the needle break? Yeah, this is exactly, switch it off. Okay, if you're getting an error that doesn't make a lot of sense, switch it off and back on again. Because usually if it's, okay, if it's something like this, it's an error because the, because the thing didn't, wouldn't go properly, right? Let's change the needle. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to pre-bend a needle. I'm going to pre-bend a needle a little bit. There's no point in bending it like, there's no point in bending it in the machine. Come on, what's going on? All you really have to do is get this. Oh, because I'm using the wrong, I'm using the wrong screwdriver. All you have to do is get this loosened enough to pull that out, right? Get a fresh needle out. Okay. We are we are supposed to be faffling. Um that needle might be dull. Oh. All that hassle to keep things, and the first thing I do is pull the cord. Let me get the needle. I, I'm sure, I'm sure that the needle that's in my machine right now could do with the change. It's in my genome. I would have loved for it to happen naturally, right? Yeah, it's not, doesn't want to go. It does not want to break. Oh, I will say, I will say some needles are more sturdy than others. So that could be what's going on. Getting your needle in is not necessarily all that hard. There's a slot right there. Make sure the my hands are in the way. There's a there's a your your needle has a your needle has a flat spot on the back. Make sure the flat spot is facing towards the back. Tighten it up. Get that out. Get that okay. Let's see if I can break one without without having to make things happen. Let's see. There it goes. Did you see it? Okay, 
Error six. It hung up. And look at that. Tip of the needle is gone. Tip of the needle. Is, I should have threaded it first. Now I don't know where the tip of the needle went. This is why you vacuum often. So the tip of the needle came right off. And it is gone. It went and went into went into needle heaven. And it's really, really simple. It really is. You just pop out the needle. Pop in your new one. Get your hand out of the way. Get your hand out of the way, Peggy. Okay, right now, this doesn't this doesn't want to come off because the foot's in the way, right? It's just just take off the foot if you have to to get it out of your way. Let the needle come out. There you go. The tip disappeared though, because I should have threaded it. If you thread it, most of the time when you thread it, the tip will stay in the thread. Well, if that one broke, maybe these needles are just too sturdy. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this needle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look how thick this, look how thick that needle is compared to the one I just put in. I'm going to get a thinner needle. I'm, I've got lots of needles and I buy them in bulk. So it's not going to hurt me to sacrifice. These are nice. There should be no one contacting me at this time of day. Let's go see who's dumb enough to call me. Nobody. Freaking spam. Spam callers. We get a shit ton of that around here. Lots of scammers trying to do stupid shit. That might be one. That looked a lot thinner. I'm just picking out a good noodle. Thicker needles, okay, thicker needles would be more helpful. They'll be more th sturdy. Um, okay, we'll do that one. We'll, we'll, we'll use my thinner needles. We're going to do this again. This will be fun. This is going to be fun. Let's go use a pack. Of, let's go waste a pack of needles. Okay. Here we go. I really, there's, there's one thing I want to try and do intentionally, and I hope I can make it happen. Let's get, let's get a clean piece of fabric, get the, get, get a better view, get a better view, get the dust out. This machine has been sitting for a really long time, really, really long time. Okay. Machine goes off, machine goes back on. Even if the machine does not give an error message, if you are breaking a needle, go ahead and start it and restart it anyway. It's not going to hurt you to restart your... What's going on here? Let's get that foot out of the way. I don't even know where my needle's lined up right now, but... There we go. Get that in there. If my hand is in the way and you need to see something a second time, I'm happy to redo it because we're trying to wreck this shit today. We are really trying to wreck this shit today. Okay. A lot of times the biggest problem that you're going to be dealing with is... Uh, Broken needles. We're going to create some intentional snagging in a bit, too. I just want to wreck all my needles first. Okay, show's over. Are the needles? Okay, get that down there. Let's see. Get the camera. Let's get the camera lined up a little bit better. This is this is an exercise in hand-eye coordination. A lot of times, people because this is because this is one prep because that's one thing to press. You don't always if you can get it to loop under there, you're fine. Hold it with some slight tension. What's going on? There we go. Always make sure your needle is all the way up. So get it. I oh, it's a, it's a hand-eye coordination exercise. So get it there. Hold it with some slight tension. Push that all. The, then push it the rest of the way. Then put it in. And hold it ever so slightly, but not so tightly that it can't draw backwards. And there you go. Okay. I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna get some of that in there. So that ideally, let's get a few stitches in too. Okay. Okay, we're gonna get a few stitches in there. So now I've just fucked up. I've moved everything. Is that the one I wanted? 
I fucked up. I moved everything over way too far. I forgot that I don't have, I forgot that I don't have a, um, I have a pinpoint instead of a slot. I forgot. Fuck that up. Cross your fingers. See if we break it. There we go. So you're going to hear that noise before, during, or after. If you hear that noise, do not try to stop it. Take your hands. Okay. As soon as that noise starts, I let go of everything. My foot comes off the pedal. I let it finish its process. Okay. That is, it's kind of, I don't know if you, I don't know if I want to call it a safety thing, but you definitely don't want to be trying to shove your hands in there. They always say, they always say to only move this, the, the, the wheel the side. They say to only move it towards yourself. This is the time you want to move it backwards. You want you want to move it in whichever direction lets you lift the needle, lift the um, needle back up. And now we can see, let's get the foot out of the way. Now we can see, I'm just taking that you don't have, whatever's, whatever works for you. And now you can see that the needle is still attached to the thread. So you don't, it has to be a really bad break before you're losing the all of the needle. I lost the other needle tip and I'll, I'll vacuum later. The dogs are nowhere near me and I'm pretty sure I know exactly where it went. Um, so you don't always, so often, often it stays like that. Anyway, let's pull it out a little bit. Come on, get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. That's needle breaking 101. And then you just got to change your needle. Again. Again. Change the needle again. I want to get that off just yet. I'm not doing that one. Okay. What am I doing? I'm having the brainiest of brain cramps. I'm just going to hold this. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way. You don't, if you're, if you're, I'll tell you right now, a really good pair of needle nose pliers or really long, these are really long craft pliers can make things a lot more accessible for you. Do that. Do that. Do that. Okay. That's breaking needles 101. Breaking needles is, oh, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, now we're going to do, we're going to do this again. We're going to do this again. Now, the other thing that can happen, well, the other thing, that that's the, okay, that's the most obvious, the uh, most obvious way to break a needle is to be doing it while you are, um, something moved, something shifted, and don't forget, sometimes, like, okay, so if you don't tighten, if you don't tighten your needle in enough, the needle can end up like flopping around, getting caught on things or whatever. I'm going to. Doesn't want to do it. Basically what I want to do over time, I'm not going to, I can't, I'm, I'm, I can't get it to do it without breaking the needle all over again. Let's do that. I want to be i want you guys to be able to see well and i can't do that when my hands are in the way okay left-handed left-handed needle work here where's the hell where's the hell i didn't open the thing enough that's why there's the hole come on get in there you there you go push it up push it up apply a little pressure just enough to make sure that it's not that it's exactly where you want it to be tighten by hand don't be afraid to get a little, don't be, don't be, afraid, you know, once it, once it gets comfortably tight, this is not the right, then go a, a little tiny bit more, get it in there nice and tight. There we go. I was trying to, uh, I was trying to bend the needle on purpose, but it just didn't want to cooperate. What's going on here? That is supposed to be. Oh, that's why I've got the cord. There we go. Okay. That's what that, that's, that is where that is supposed to be. We're just going to leave that foot on for now. Now. No, I don't think you're too late at all, Tammy. We're, we're, we've only been, I've only been going for about an hour. So got to turn the machine off and back on again. This is where the, this is where the brother, this is where this particular, now I, I don't, I'm not saying this about all brothers. This is the only brother machine I've ever had. 
I have no idea this is common or not, but this is where the brother machine gets really tedious is if, if you're having a day of problems, because every time something happens to cause the machines, the machine to react like this with the E6 errors and stuff, every time this happens, even if you don't, even if nothing, even if you're not getting an error message, it's usually a good idea to turn your machine off and back on again, just to reset it, this sort of thing. So when you're doing, if you're having, if you're having a bad, say, okay, say you got a batch of bad needles or a batch of problematic fabric, whatever, whatever, whatever. If you have to turn it off and on a lot, la, 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 this starts off to the side. You got to make sure you move it back to the center every time. I don't like that about this particular machine. It's the only machine I've ever had that does it. I actually like the Singer Simple a lot better. What I also don't like about this is the, this, the motor is not as heavy duty. It is not nearly as heavy duty. 4, 8, 16. Is it 16? This motor is not as heavy duty. I gotta get the. Uh, I gotta get it rethreaded. The uh, the motor is not as heavy duty as a Singer Simple, and one of the things I do has me going through sixteen layers of fabric. So let's go through sixteen layers. Actually, we're gonna do this. Yeah, we're gonna go through sixteen layers of fabric right here, and we'll see. It should go through just fine like this. But let's see. Okay, that's fine. But now let us, because don't forget, I decorative stitch. Let's do 61. Is that what I want to do? No. This machine is this machine, this particular machine too is a little weird. So when you're when you're picking a thing, you go you go one to nine on this set of buttons. And then you go two to five, but it lets you go up to the 80s. And I don't know why. Oh, it lets you go to 99. So you have, it's it's awesome that you just pick your number. And you have to pick based on, if you're on this, you can go to 99. If you're on this, it's it's it works. It does work. So there's that. So this is number 10. We're going to do that little design right there. Let's see. Let us see. It's not supposed to move like that. What's going on? Sorry. I am just, let's see. So this is going to go backwards and forward. That's the wrong one. Nope, that's the wrong one for some reason. Oh, is that it? There we go. Let's flip it around. Let's flip it around. Are you guys hearing that thumping? That is a lot of pressure for a relatively light duty machine to take. Oh, that's not even doing the one I want now. Now what happens with this, what happens with this is that the needle is bent a little bit. Oh, I see the bend. I can feel the bend. Let's see. Let's see. Let's give it a second. No, it's not. Co it's not cooperating. It is not cooperating. Basically, what happens is, over time, you start smacking your needle off of something or whatever. You start smacking your needle off of something or whatever, or whatever, and it starts to bend the tiniest bit, and then it can just break. You hear that occasional is going. Okay. It's it's doing it a little bit. It's going da 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 da. Every now and again, you get a louder a louder noise because it's not dealing with the thickness very well. This is actually doing better than it did when I was when I was trying to do it before. Of course, of course. Now that I'm trying, now that I'm trying to fuck things up, it's like, no, we can't be bothered. We cannot be bothered. We cannot do it that way. But now we are going to. Bobbin goes. I am I am determined to make things happen. I am I am done trying to break needles. We're gonna move on. Okay. Bobbin goes up, right? So we're gonna flip it and have it come down. See what happens. 
So basically the bobbin is now in backwards. And we just go around like that, in through those grooves, bring it around like that, pop it off. Let's see what happens now. Because the next big thing is nesting, is bird nesting. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no, no, you can, yeah, see it. I'm not going to see it very well. Can you see it on that one? No, I'm not going to see it very well. This is, this is, this actually, this actually sewed up better than I thought it was going to. I've got lots of scrap. This is, these are just edge pieces with lots of salvage that I can't really use for anything else. Okay. So I should have used darker because it's not going to show up the same way. There we go. We'll just go through a single layer. Okay. So the bobbins are upside down. Let's see if it does it or not. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I'm not sure if it works on your machine, but on mine with the machine off. Okay. This is from Gail. Let's get this up here. With the machine off. So if you're so if you've actually got a machine and you're having this problem with having to send the needle every time you turn it on, try this on your machine. Um, with the machine off, hold the left plus button. Wait, which left plus button? Oh, okay. I've got two. I've got an upper. Oh, okay. That one, the bottom one. So on mine, whoops, on mine, let me just get my, oh my God, let's just, so for me, it would be this one here because the first one is your size. So the, not, not the size of your stitches, but the direction of your stitches. And it should be in the middle of when you turn it on or it was on mine, the stitch, the stitch selection button. Yeah. So this is going to be whichever has, if you're, if you're using an electronic mach machine, it'll also, it should have the, the zigzaggy pattern beside it. That's good advice. Let's turn the machine off. So hold it. Turn the machine on. Whoops. Nope. <laughs> Still on zero, zero. Oh, well, okay. But every machine is different, right? Okay, so this here, we've got, we've got this. I already know what happened here. I already know what happened here. Let's get the camera down a little tiny bit. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got that. We've got this design here, right? Now this design here, let me... We're gonna have to. You're gonna have to take my word for it. But let's go. Let's get over here. Let's look at this. this let's, okay, this is the same design. This is the same design that I just that I that I just did here. See how nice and boxed and crisp those corners are. This is the one I thought was gonna have a huge fucking problem because I can't. I was having okay when I tried to use this machine for something similar, going through multiple layers. I had a big problem. For but see, okay, nice squares, right? Bobbins in backwards. Bobbins and backwards. Now the black is the top. Look at all. Look at how all the squares are slightly rounded. They they have this almost rounded appearance. Now flip it over and look at the back, and see how all the all that black. Okay, this is all white on the bottom. The bottom is a white bobbin. All the black is being pulled through the back because the bobbin's not. It's not going through properly. It's not going through properly, so it's. The tension is, it's screwing up with the tension and it's actually screwing up the design because you're not going to be able to see it very clearly. But when you're doing these types of designs, front and back should look the same. What do I got here? I got, I grabbed, what did I grab? I grabbed a grab. Where am I? Where'd it go? I put everything I thought I was going to, oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. This is an old bag I made a long, long time ago. See how the design's on the top, right? Well, when you turn it inside right, in, now, when, now when you look at the back, the design is the same. The, this desi these designs, and I didn't think it through when I used black and white. 
when I use black and white, I can see it, but you guys can't see it. But the design on the back does not match the design on the front because the tension's all fucked up because bobbins in backwards. But it's pulling funny. It's not connecting funny. It's just not working right. Let's see if I can get another one. It's going to be a little bit more. I don't think I've, I don't think there's anything that's more obvious. Twenty one. Let's see. This is not. Oh my god! This machine is not liking me. It's not the right stitch. That is not the. Oh, that's why. There we go. That's not right. There we go. You know what it is? Okay, on my on this machine here, I I keep for, when I first used the machine, I had the same problem. You 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 switch these to get your number, but you actually have to switch up here. So if you're on the A, if you're on the A, you're on. If you're on this, you're on that page. If you're on that, see, so this page, all of this. All of that is everything on both of these pages. And if you go here, that is this page. And then that, the A, is that page. And I keep, because there was one that I almost got. I only I only managed to use this three or four times before I gave up. There was one that I almost got where as you flip the pages, it did have a detector inside and did stuff and whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's see if I can show this one better. Eh, okay. So we've got nice little designs on the front. Can barely tell. Now, see this one actually. This one actually, when you get up close, it's not that much different, right? But the bobbin is still in backwards, and your tension is totally screwed. That's why you can see so much of the black coming through. Yeah, it, yeah. I can. I, I'm. I'm concerned that you guys aren't seeing quite what I want you to see on the camera, but that's okay. So now we are going to do. Now this, okay, this better work because I will tell you right now, whenever I do this shit by accident, it works like a fucking charm. I have this happen, not regularly. Okay, Ugh. almost at the end of a bobbin or it just happens. Okay, so you've got your bobbin, you've got your bobbin, here's your bobbin, right? Only now in this case, because I'm so close to the end of the bobbin, the, the tail is also has also poked through. So now I've got two pieces of two pieces of now I've got now I've got two threads here. And if my machine, if I'm using the machine like that, and we're doing it on purpose. Do 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 do. You ever notice that? Have you ever tried have, okay? Okay, now you guys, you guys are under orders now. Go and make a mistake on purpose and see if you can actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just got distracted and forgot that it was even up there. Thanks for the heads up. Thanks for the heads up, Gail. I, yep. Okay, so what I've done, what I've done is my bobbin goes like that, right? Comes off from the top. What What's going on with that? I, I, put, I, I had to take that bobbin off like yesterday, day before, because sometimes, sometimes, what will happen is once you get to the end of the bobbin, the tail will pop loose and start getting in the way. Or what can happen is just, you know, you got a table, you got a table full of scraps or something and an extra piece, an extra piece just gets pushed in by the needle or you're changing things around. A little, little loose piece ends up inside the machine for one reason or another. And you end up not knowing it's there for one reason or another. Let's see if we can make this happen on purpose. I don't want to use that one. I want to have a, if the machine gets wrecked, it gets wrecked, but I don't want to do things that are going to make it happen on purpose. Okay, so let's see how, let's see if, let's see if we, let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the bobbin is improperly. The rest of the thread is improperly. Everything's done right, but underneath, in, on the bobbin, the tail has broken free, and now it's going to get tangled up and everything. What's going on? Why are you not going? I don't know why it did that. There 
we go. And it decided to hang up. Yeah, I thought it was down. Oh, well, it's down now. Okay, so now everything has completely tangled up because that second piece of thread got, ra got wrapped up inside the works underneath. And of course, obviously, I left it on purpose. And if you get lucky, if you get lucky, you can just yank it slowly and get most of it out, right? If you don't get lucky, so this is what happened. This is this is often the cause of nesting. Often the cause of nesting because the extra the extra thread is trying to is trying to get all tangled up in with everything else. Um, often when you have nesting like this, you will open up your machine. That's not the one I want. That's the one. Oh, take that one off. See, it's this is actually pretty clean. This actually this actually is surprising me. It should be way worse than what it is. Um, I'll tell you right now when it's doing it and trying to uh, suck in a uh, when, it, when it's doing it usually. Oh, because I don't have an automatic thread cutter. Because quite often what quite often the automatic thread cutter will come out into play and start causing problems. But that's what you find inside. You find either a next, either a loose piece of thread that wasn't there before, or you find that, and that makes it fun. This was actually easier than I thought it was going to be because there's no. Uh... What are we doing here? What are we doing? This is this is awesome in some ways, but I don't necessarily love this. It was a, it's a great idea in theory, not necessarily in practice to be using this piece. Come on. Come on. That's still not on there properly. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Okay, so I'm falling out of love with this as a feature because I'm having to use way more pressure than I thought I was going to to get all this shit to hook back up again. Okay, you go there. Everybody goes there. No, you go there. Hand-eye coordination being being the thing that it's meant to be. Come on. I'm not liking. I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this at all. Now I'm trying. Now I'm going to try and break this damn machine. This is like. Yeah, that's. Yeah, when my threads tangle, they tangle hard, and I have to cut the fabric away and cut out the bobbin to get it out of the machine. That's kind of what I thought was going to happen. I'm actually really surprised it wasn't worse than what it was. You know what can sometimes happen, though? Is that if you catch it just right, oh, my God, what? It, why does this thing hate me? Look at this. It is just not cooperating. There we go. Okay, that is... Okay, it's a really cool feature that I can get into the machine this way, but it's going to break. If if I were to be using this machine on a regular basis, quite often what happens, what can also happen with this is that look at the top, look at the top. Sometimes this sometimes this stitches along for a while before you actually start to notice that something's going on. And that certainly doesn't help. But let's uh let's set let's set myself up for failure. And uh Now this is not always caused. This is the fun part. This is this is this is not always caused by loose threads being inside your machine with your bobbin. That's not that's not the only cause, but this is the this is one of those surefire guarantees to make it happen. So if you're changing your bobbin or if you're doing something and you are fairly certain, like if you're putting your stuff in here and you're like, oh, I'm pretty sure there's an extra piece of you 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 see that. This is this is just sitting here. It is minding its own business. You're like, no, nah, it's not a problem. I'm putting one in. I'm putting one on purpose in here to see what it does. See if I can screw things up intentionally. This whole purpose here. There we go. Get in there. Get in there. I'm popping another one in. I'm popping another one in, and we're going to uh, see what I can do here. I am going to. I am going to do, 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 
I'm going to sew these together. I am sewing two pieces of fabric together. I've just I've just taken this one and I've cut it. So I have an actual seam to work with. Okay. So we're gonna go. Did it do it? Did it do it? Did it do it? It's, I'm going too slow too, which sometimes lets it uh, sort itself out. Certainly doesn't help that I'm not using the stitch cutter. Oh my God, it's sewed up beautifully. Sewed up beautifully. That's awesome. Okay. Now I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take that off. I'm leaving that in there. Fuck that. I don't, I don't know why it didn't. I don't know why it didn't wreck. That was supposed to wreck my day. It really was. Okay. I'm going to. Oh, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I've got my, I've got my fabric. I've got a seam. I've got the seam allowance on the, I've got the seam allowance on the inside. I've got a seam. I've got this going on. And now I am hopefully, hopefully I'm starting, I'm starting just before. Let's get in here. I am putting the machine, I'm putting it on here. I'm starting I'm starting sewing just before that very, very corner because I'm hoping to smash it into the machine. Let's see what we do. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me that are you telling me that now that I'm trying to make bad things happen? I am trying to make bad things happen. I am trying to make that bad things happen and it's not happening that way. Yeah, it's fighting back against the mistakes. My God. Okay. Okay, that's okay. There's a few. Okay, there's still a few more reliable things I can make happen to this machine. So we're gonna go way too close to the edge. Come on. Now I'm helping my machine, so I'm just gonna hold it and let it sew in the same spot for a while. Let's see. Is that gonna work? It is. Oh my fucking god! The more I try to make this go badly, the more the more beautiful the results. Jesus fuck. Okay, I am going to, I am going to do this. I am going to turn this this way. I'm going to do this. I'm going to pop this. Just, just give me a second. Okay. Oh, you stop over there. Come on, guys. Think of a, think of a mistake I can make. Okay, so now I've made a little tiny... I just, I just made a, I just, I just sewed it. So I have a little tiny, little teeny tiny corner here, little tiny corner, tiny, tiny corner. I know I'm, I'm forcing, I'm going to force this one to work because this can happen and it can happen to anybody. You guys ever get a really weird pain in your finger because your knuckle has to crack? I just had that happen. I'm so pissed. Okay. Okay. Back over here. Now I've got a corner. I need I need this. I need to sew this way. Okay. So I need to put in my stitching at the corner. I need to do a decorative stitch because I'm doing a reading cloth. Because this, this is why I know it's repeatable. It's like, uh-uh-uh. But the right one. That is the right one. No, I don't want that one. Okay. Is that right? Nope. It's not even going to go on the right side. Jesus Christ. I need to figure. Oh, 75. We'll do set. We'll do 75. Okay. So I'm sewing along the very outer edge. Do, 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 do. Now I've come to the corner. Something went wrong. Let's pop this off for a second so I can show you. Nope. I can't pop it off. It doesn't want to go off. I am getting so frustrated with this machine. I'm trying to make things go wrong. Okay. So now, every now and again, you get in here and your fabric. Let's get you lined up. Well, we're lining you up perfectly. This better fucking go. Every now and again, your fabric will shove into the slot underneath. Come on, go in there. It doesn't even want to do it. It doesn't even want to let me try. There we go. Let's see if I can make it go. I really want to force this to happen. I, you know what? Nope. Fucker. Fucker, fucker, fucker. I'm just going to sit there and swear at this damn machine. Down you go. Okay, we're just going to, we're just going to keep you here until you do what I want you to do. No, 
me doing it. Well, okay, here's what's happening now. Okay, so I over sewed a spot, and now I can't get it to go forward. No hands. Ah, I think it just did it. Okay, let's see what's do let's see what it's doing now. Nope. If you over sew a spot, it won't go. If you if you over sew a spot, it will stop. It will stop being able to move, and it will just keep sewing the same spot forever and ever. But uh, fucker, I cannot believe how uncooperative is this machine is being. It knows what's happening. It knows what I'm trying to do to it. It knows what I'm trying to do. Let us get this out of here. I really want to do a big major nest to show you guys how to dig them out. Yeah, shorter stitch leg. Oh, yeah, this is pretty long. I can go to point two. I can go to a point two. Let's see if that'll do it. I'm also going to get... I'm going to start with a really pointy corner. Oh, now I can take the, now I can take the foot off, though, because everything's out of the way. Is that sticking up? I'm going to go with a really pointy corner. Now, I'm forcing it down just to force a problem to happen. But unfortunately, is that when you get into the right angles, the, the, the speed, the length of the stitch, and other factors can force it down. Because all it's going to do is pop down... Your stitching is going really fast. So all you got all it has to do is pop down for a couple of seconds and it can be enough to catch a dozen stitches before you before you notice what's going on. Let's see if it's gonna do it now. There we go, I can hear it. So you're trying to turn your corner. You did it just pop did it just pop out? I think it just popped out. Jesus Christ, I, I am not winning at this today. I will tell you right now, if I don't win at this soon. Let's back up. No, it's not going, it's not going anywhere. It's not going. It's fine. I think I've got I think I'm making it happen now. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I did it. I did it. It's not coming. Okay. So I am feeling it try to pop loose, and I'm not gonna let it. When this happens, if you if you yank on it rhythmically, like like it can often pop itself loose if it's not too badly tied up. <laughs> Sorry, that my kid, she was giggling. Oh, because she's hearing all the swearing. I'm sorry. Okay. So a little bit of this can help. Quite often, quite often, if you have a thread cutter built in, quite often the thread cutter may not be your friend because it can actually make things worse. So you bring the needle up if you can, take the foot off if you can, and then you get the pointiest scissors that you've got and you start cutting. And you pull that out of your machine. I was really hoping it was going to tangle more than it did, but look at that. This one's actually not tangling as badly as I thought it was going to. Now, what can sometimes happen, though, sometimes you try to salvage your work. This is, where, this is where life gets not so fun. You try to salvage your work. So you're like, okay, I'm just going to trim out everything that I can. Get that back on. Put it back down. Do, do, do. Because by now, by now, I should have had, by now, I should have also had to um, re-thread my machine, which didn't thread. Oh, but there's a repeatable mistake. Not a mistake. There's a there's a repeatable problem that I have to put in. Let's see if I can get a big. Let's see if I can get some. Uh, okay. Thread is okay. Thread is two of these. Two of these. I don't know if you guys can see it very well. A, a thread is two smaller threads wound together. So what happens sometimes? This one. We're gonna do this one. This one will work. I know this one. I know this one will work. I just don't know how how easy it's gonna work. Okay. So sometimes now you're sewing along and you're minding your own business, right? And sometimes you're, you're very you're not gonna make this mistake when you're just getting started. But every now and again, every now and again, there will be a flaw. There'll be a flaw in the thread, so that after a while. Come on, you can do it. 
Okay. Every now and again, there's a flaw in the thread so that only part, oops, come on. Okay, let's get over here. See, it's not, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure I only catch this one piece. So it's like, okay, well, I can do the whole thing, I guess, to get started. All right, get that through there. Okay, so now every now and again, every now and again, one side of this will break free. So you end up with two, and you just don't notice it, at least not for a while. So we're going to pop that one out. We're going to... Pull this we're going to take a chance and pull all this backwards through the machine get it just past there okay so visually if you're usually this happens while you're sewing okay so you're sewing you're minding your own business life goes on because this is this is one you did oh, now you're, you're either your either your thread is going to break Thread broke and you didn't even, and I didn't even see it. Now it's all up here. Now I gotta see, now I gotta take the top off. Let's see, so the thread broke, didn't even see it. It's all weird on the. It's a it's a little. It's not super super weird, but it's weird on the back. But it's hard to notice because it's hard to notice because usually usually when this happens, the thread breaks. You haven't really spotted it yet. It's moving away the machines even this machine that really isn't considered to be all that fast is minding its own business and now do one thing wrong for me i'm getting in here and i'm pulling and look at that look at that shit right there that doesn't want to come out and the unfortunate problem is that you don't always get to you don't always get to just yank it back out of the machine of course, this is going to come out no problem, but most of the time, this is not, this is not, okay, you guys are, you guys are seeing for yourself what's happening. Most of the time when this stuff happens, it's pretty easy to get your stuff back on track, right? So when this happens, what you need to do, you don't just cut here. You don't just cut here and continue. You don't, you don't, you don't just cut this thread and continue. You come all the way back to the, come all the way back to where the thread's coming off here. Come back there, pull it forward towards yourself from this section and get rid of the whole length. Because usually, usually it's either a flaw, either these guys make hundreds and thousands and thousands of miles of thread every single day. So when these with these guys making thousands of miles of thread every single day, of course, every now and again, there's going to be a split. There's going to be a whatever, and it's going to happen. And it's not your fault. It's not the machine's fault. If it's happening a lot, it might be that the entire spool of thread is a mess. If it happens a lot, no matter what, then you got to get in here and start cleaning out the machine. But there was one I wanted to show you guys. I want, I wanted to, there was one I wanted to make happen and I haven't been able to make it happen yet. Even that piece of, I threw a piece of thread in here just to force it to go wrong and it didn't. It did not. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. Okay. This here, let's go down here just a little bit. Now, when you're putting your thread in, when you're putting your thread in, this machine has a little cutter because this cuts it at the, this, you run it through and you cut it and it just has a little teeny tiny cutter. The thread is now the exact same, exact correct length to sew with, right? And then it just automatically feeds itself on, does it properly. But what I'm going to do, I'm trying to force, I'm trying to force mistakes to happen. This, this is not likely a mistake that you're going to have happen. So we're just going to do it on purpose. We're going to leave a nice long piece of thread because I'm going to fucking hold it this time. I'm going to hold the thing down. I cannot believe I have had days where I am literally, I have had days where I've just had the worst of luck and have to give up sewing for the whole day 
just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I keep doing this wrong. I keep doing that wrong. Okay. In order for the thread cutter to work properly, the needle has to be at its highest point. Come on, get in there. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be it. I'm just going to hold this for a few stitches. I'm going to hold this for a few stitches. Let's cut off some of this trash here. I've got lots of scraps set aside, but even now I just don't want to waste it if I don't have to. Okay. I'm going to hold this for a little bit so that it can't go through properly and we'll see what happens. Because sometimes these do get, sometimes you're, sometimes your bobbin thread, if something goes wrong underneath, if something goes wrong underneath with your bobbin, if something goes, okay, there we go, now it's good. If something goes wrong underneath with your bobbin, you don't know it until it happens because you can't see it. So that's the big thing there. Let it go. Yeah, it did. It did what I, it did. It did one of the things that I wanted it to do. Okay, you guys aren't going to see this very well, but because I was holding it, because I was I was forcing it, I was forcing it to snag on itself. Right, this here. Oh, you let me get microphones over here. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can tell, but this is solid. This is a solid knot of stuff. And it didn't start trying to do anything until I started pulling, until I started pulling it forward. What's going on here? Ooh, we're just going to leave that like that. We're going to leave that like that. I still want to make a proper snag. Nesting at the bottom, nesting at the bottom, nesting at the bottom can be your machine needs to be cleaned. It can be that it's not usually a tension problem, believe it or not. Um, tension is just its own thing. Um, but it can be that there's, um, excess. If you have excess bits of thread in your machine, you really want to get rid of them. You really want, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally putting them in just to force nesting to happen. But, uh, no, you really don't, you really want to keep that out of the way. Um, nesting in the bottom can also be because your top thread's not on properly and it's just coming out weird. Let's see what happens now. Uh, more, more intentional nesting. You know what? This usually happens the most on um, decorative stitching. So let's see. Is that right? 61 on that one. Did it get caught? Of course it didn't. It's sewing beautifully. Jesus Christ. This thing hates me. Oh, no. Wait, wait. Something's going on. But uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I cannot believe this is this is making me crazy. Yeah, it just pulled. See, now this here, this here is not nesting. That's that wad. Of, that's this this white here is that wad of white that I just intentionally tucked in, and then once it worked its way out, it just went back to normal sewing. Okay, come on. Somebody somebody with some experience here, give me something. Oh, here's something I can do intentionally. I don't know if it's going to work or not. We're going to put the needle down. We're going to thread the machine with the needle down. We're going to drop the camera. Lisa's going to come home and divorce my ass for wrecking her shit. So, I did not... I kid you not. I do this. I do this on any any other time any other way okay i'll tell you right now that's actually some good news for this machine though that it's pretty resilient and doesn't uh, get hung up on this stuff but what is a what is a mistake i am making every mistake in the book and this machine is just like fuck you screw you 
It's trying to get back at me for calling it names. No, it's actually, okay. This is actually a pretty good machine. I mean, I, I, it does not suit my particular needs. And like I said, like when I'm, when I'm doing my, um, when I'm doing, I, I even grabbed one to show you guys when I'm doing a two pocket here, don't forget every layer of fabric come, every layer of fabric comes with the inside. Ah, uh, Every layer of fabric, when you sew a thing, when you sew something, and then you have to flip it, your seam allowance, so you take two pieces of fabric and fold them together, but then you have seam allowance and seam allowance. So when you flip them to finish them, you've now got four layers to sew through. On my, po on my two pocket bags, it's 16 layers. It's 16 layers and they're very tightly, they're very, very tensely tightly put together. Oh, 16 layers plus three layers of interfacing. So with that being the thing, yeah, when I, I can't use this, well, 16, 19 layers. Nope, it's not doing it. Jesus Christ. This has been a flop, guys. Okay, I'm just going to go back to breaking needles for fun. <laughs> Oh, here's one you can do though. This, this, okay. I don't know if you guys are noticing. Every time this stops, this kind of. Okay, I'm just being lazy. Oh, now it's now it's doing something I don't want it to do. I wonder what I did. <laughs> now that I stopped trying. Now sometimes when you try to bring your needle back up, it just won't go. Oh, now it did something. Yeah, now it's nice and tangled. Oh my God. Okay. I gave up and now it's like, okay, we forgive you now. I said something nice about it and it immediately started doing what I wanted it to do. How is that for like, who says AI isn't real? Okay. So what I got going on here, I don't know if you guys can see it very well in there. I've got a lovely knot of shit happening right there on the top it's nice and tight now if you have a machine with a thread cutter and you try to yeah it's, it's got back at me so if you have a machine with a thread cutter and you try to use a thread cutter at this point sometimes you get lucky and sometimes it makes your problem worse is a problem so the first thing you want to do is get in here and you want to cut this with a thread cutter but what you really want is you know this cheap garbage you know this cheap garbage looking thread cutter that comes with the machine and everybody goes oh these are cheap garbage thread cutters never throw these away because getting a pair of scissors under here i could end up cutting them because I'm, I'm working blind i i'm i can't see I, can, I can't see any better than you guys can on the camera right now so i'm like okay what am i cutting especially if i'm working with dark fabric dark thread or like if, if like this is white, this is white bobbin on the bottom. I can't see, I, I see black thread, but I can't see any white. So it's like, uh-oh, if I screwed, the, so if I start digging, if I start hacking around in here with, with the bigger scissors, with, with this, that's, this is actually, I'll do what I got to do, but either use the finest scissors that you can get your hands on or use the thread cutter that comes with the machine, get in there. And I got lucky, start pushing, whoops, it's over there. I got lucky and it was a big knot because, because don't forget, I did not, it is not in the, it, these are called um, racers at the top. It is not threaded properly because I had the foot down when I threaded it, not the foot up. So this is not proper. And then you got to get over here and you got to get over here and fuck with the camera again for a little while. Cause that's always fun. So when you get over here, you're looking at this. And you got this. I should have brought the camera. I should have brought the microphone up. I've, I'm, I'm set up. I'm set up pretty awkwardly as it is. Moira, hello. I'm set up pretty awkwardly as it is. But yeah, so this just made a great big giant knot. Now, what's going on here though? This is what matters. This is this is the stuff that matters. So I'm going to get this foot off here. You guys are actually Moira shows up and things start breaking. A coincidence? I think not. I have been losing at the break shit battle for a while now. Okay. What I can see, and I don't know if you guys can see it, is right here, I see some black thread. So I can get a piece of tweez pair of tweezers, and I can tug out what I can see, right? But after a knot like that, you really don't want to take chances. So you want to 
do 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 I will tell you, half of the tools that come with these machines, they are, they were, I don't know who, I don't know who developed this stuff. Come on. Oh, God, I don't know if I can get that off. Keep them because sometimes you just don't have a choice. But uh, this is the screwdriver. This is the screwdriver that you're supposed to use for everything here. And they, it is such awkward stuff. Like, I mean, this is, there we go. That's on that side. I don't know how you're supposed to take that one off. Okay. Come on, did it go? Okay. I prefer that was just that was just on way too tight for me. So I prefer. Come on, my God! I swear to God! I swear to God! This was put together by somebody who does not want women to come anywhere near the mechanics of their own machines. Don't lose those. You guys see that, by the way? Once you get this loosened up, you just take your fingertip and just go in circles and just go in circles around the outside edge of that screw and it will just follow your fingertip and come right off. I'm just taking the whole thing off because I've been fucking around for long enough now that I better double check the inside anyway. <laughs> oh, looks like I gotta pop that off anyway. Yeah, I'm not happy with how this comes apart. It it was it's it's great in theory, but not great. Okay, so there'll be there there's what we got going on, right? So every time I open the machine, no matter why I'm opening it, I do a quick little dust off. Set that over there. Take out that loose thread take out the bobbin, take out that guy, take out any really, really obvious dust. That's, no, this was already there. I don't know if you guys remember when I started. Take out any really obvious dust. Because the first thing I want to do, you guys saw me pop, you guys saw me pop out that thread. The first thing I want to do is make sure that there's no threads. This is actually really simplified. This is a really simplified machine. With a, with a really simplified interior like look at look at how easily you can see there's a big gap over there right see the, see the big gap over here like this is a really simplified relatively light duty machine i had my other one open open earlier and it's just full of shit so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you want to make sure that there's no that there's no um that there's no oh my god i can't even talk right now Take your bobbin out. Now that you've screwed around with it, take it out. Make sure that it's clean. Make sure that it's clean. Make sure all those excess threads have been taken out of there. Oh, yeah, you can absolutely use pressurized air. And I've got one of these guys. This is, this is a little vacuum thing. There it is. It does the same job. It does the same job as pressurized air, but it's rechargeable. It does the exact same job as pressurized air, but it's rechargeable, so it's cheaper in the long run. Especially, especially considering how often. I mean, I've got I've got one or the other machine open at least once a week for something, which is why I've gotten into the habit of doing a basic, generic light cleaning. Come on, what's going on? Oh shit. This, yeah, this has got some, it's got some advantages to have this two-part door catch thing, but I'm not necessarily sure I'm super impressed with it at the end of the day. Come on, get in there. 
I'm going to end up breaking this machine just because I can't figure out how to put it back together. Come on, why are you doing that? There we go. I'll do that. There we go. Woo! This is a two-piece, so it's not cooperating the way I would like it to. A lot of the times these weird little screwdrivers aren't because they're actually good screwdrivers it's just because they're such an there there are screws and stuff in such awkward positions but like this here this little freaking screwdriver will not turn properly with the um because this is in the way not necessarily a design win here this the fact that this comes out as a design win this comes out in two parts that's a design win but the fact that uh the fact that this is like there and they do not have to be so tight they have to be tight enough that it's not going to come up they don't have to be so tight that you're that you're pulling muscles in your arms just to get them to go i'm going to have a big mess to clean up when i'm done here okay now after something like that has happened re-thread re your machine making sure that the foot is up doing the thing making sure that the needle is up. Get this in here. Get this in here. Yeah, you just don't want to blow to the right and into no man's land unless you want to take the actual machine cover off to clean it. There is a yes. You have to be careful when you you have to be careful when you're using canned air to clean a machine because there are sections and areas in the machine like where's the screw for this one do i have a long screwdriver handy i do not have a long screwdriver handy i should have but i don't think i do well, there's there there's there it is <laughs> okay okay let us see do i have just the one or is it two over there Okay, let's come back here. Let's come back here and up here. Okay, getting the cover off. Getting the cover off. Getting the cover off. I swear to God. You have to take that into there until you find what you're until you find what you're looking for. Usually with a freaking. It's usually quite the process just to get the screwdriver into the right spot i should probably at the very least turn this off even if i'm not going to unplug it you should actually unplug these to work on them <laughs> let's get over here these are awkward These are awkward at the best of times. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, let's get back here. All th this is this is the really awkward part of cl of, of cleaning of cleaning or maintaining your machine. There we go. Is so you have to come around to the back of the machine. You have to come around, you have to come, have to come around to the back of the machine and take off that one screw. That I then now fucked up because I turned the machine back around too soon. There it is. And you gotta take, take the screw all the way out. Is it all the way out? Okay, yep. Okay. Once it's all the way out, half the time this shit just falls right back off again. There we go. Do to do. I do to do. What do to do? I do to do. I don't know what I just did, but that was awesome. Okay, let's get a let's get a light. Let's let's see if the light will come around a little bit better. Why it does? Look at that. That's kind of awesome. Okay, so this is what this machine looks like from the inside. The machine will still you can you can you okay. This is this this is literally just a safety cover. 
So you can use the machine. You can act technically, you can use the machine whether or not the safety cover is on. There's the foot. Let's get the foot back on. I don't know if any, I do, I do not know if any machines have a safety device that keeps you from using the machine without the cover on, but let's see if this one will let me use it. Come on. There we go. So this is what the machine does. It goes down and up then down and up. Okay. Remember that thing I showed you before with the machine where the, where the thread snapped on the inside, right? Remember that thing I showed you was sometimes every now and again, you can literally get through no fault of your own. Is it gonna, can I make it do it? I can make it do it. This is going to take me a second. They want, if it's not going to go peacefully, it's not going to go peacefully. Every now and again, through no fault of your own, it will make a loop around here. And it will sew for a while like that. Sometimes it can sew. Sometimes it can be sewing like that for a really long time before anything happens. Look at that. And now it's not working. Was well, there a bobbin in? There's no bobbin in. That's, that's why it went at all, because there's no bobbin in right now. So let us see. Anyway, I'm going to get back on track with the cleaning thing. So cleaning... When you are cleaning the machine, if you are spraying like this, from this direction, you could be throwing, you could be throwing all sorts of debris back into this part of the machine, back up in here, which connects, which connects into the, the motor, the motor is actually here. The motor of the machine is here, and then the works of it kind of goes there. So if you, if you blow, if you blow the debris that way, so you can so you want to start this way down you want to kind of aim a little down and back if you do see any if you do see any clots if you see any big pieces of if you see any big pieces of dust you can lift them away lightly with a pair of tweezers you can get in there with a tooth with a with a with a um um this is just this is just a paintbrush. Paintbrush, makeup brush. You don't need to kill yourself over every little thing. And every single machine, every single machine is going to have instructions on where to oil it. Follow the instructions on your machine. A lot of the machines, I tend to I tend to oil right. I tend to not in the camera properly. I tend to put a little drop of oil right there, just the tiniest drop right there. While, the, while it's down, I put the tiniest drop right there. And then it will work its way back upwards into the machine. And then, I don't know if you can see it. It's just behind. Do I have a flashlight? I don't have a flashlight. Just behind this arm, there's, a, there's the other end of that. And then I will go with the tiniest drop right there. The instructions on your machine are very clear on where you can and cannot put the oil. While your machine is, yeah, I never follow the instructions. Okay. Unless the machine is still under warranty. If the machine is still under warranty, do not put oil anywhere except where they say they to put it. Because if you're concerned or the nervous type, especially if you have a really expensive machine, for the first, okay, for the first year after I got my genome, I wouldn't, I, I would look it up every single time. There and there, that's it. Now that I've had the machine, now that I've had it for a little while, I'm a lot more, um, I don't want to say careless, that's not the word. But yeah, see, there's a little bit of dust. I'll just take that off with that. Anyway, for the most part, there's also, if your machine does decorative stitching, and I do not know why, but if your machine does decorative stitching, a lot of them say put a drop of oil right on the, um, right where the, um, um, needle threader goes down because it'll let it, because then as it goes down and up, it'll get back and just do that a few times. Anyway, where and how you oil, oil your machine. Yeah, follow the instructions. No. 
I always follow the instructions while the machine is under warranty because if you if you if you do not follow the instructions when it comes to oiling, if you if you do the thing and do too much with the oiling of the machine while it's under warranty and you and you do have a problem and need a repair, they can refuse to do it for free. Oh, you've tampered with the machine. We can tell because you put oil here and here. Once it's out of warranty, I'm like <sighs> the only thing you want to do, the only thing you really want to be careful of. Can I do that from the spot? No, I can't do it from the spot. My God. Okay. The only thing, the other, the other thing that you want to do, let's just, let's just take this thing off because I love it so much. The other thing that I, okay, this machine, this machine does not have a spot. Most machines have a little spot. Most, most machines have a little hole, a little hole right there. And you just put a drop of oil. You put a single drop of oil into that hole to oil this part, right? Most machines have that. So, oh yeah, that well, yeah. If you, if you put the yeah, Trisha says I follow the I follow them for warranty reasons. I'm too scared they will just they will just know. Exactly. They they if they if if you put too much oil on the wrong spot, they'll be able to tell, and then you're kind of screwed. One thing I do like to oil though, there it is. One thing I do like to oil is right here see this round see this part here that goes around that part there i put the tiniest i leave my i leave my machine threaded i leave, I leave my needle threaded so it'll shove fabric down there i put the tiniest drop of oil right there i put my finger in the way so that nobody can see i put the tiny i love these i love these machines with the i love these little oilers with the with the with the little feeder because you can i like these little things because you can really control how much oil you're putting in i get the tiniest drop of oil right on the top of this so that it goes just underneath the edge just underneath the edge of over there just underneath the edge of this right here because then it really helps that move really really nicely but i love i love this i love this guy here because this type of the the oil the oil things that you get for the machine oil things that you get that have the snip the top off you can, you can get these ones that they're they're tiny right and they're like oh just snip off the top only if you don't snip it off right you end up with this great big giant hole that's not going to do you any good and I just I just store this one I store this one with I store this one with the um, thing tube all the way out because capillary reaction look that up if you store it with the tube down it stays in the oil and then the oil seeps it, it does capillary reaction and goes upwards and ends up ends up all over the place but i just pull it so that the, i pull it upwards so that the tube is out of the oil and then the oil doesn't like leach upwards that's a weird thing where to put my shit where to put my shit i put my shit somewhere can't find my shit okay there's my shit man i hope nobody's kids are watching this Okay, so now back to fighting with this guy again. Okay, you go there. You, yeah, see, it's supposed to get over here. Okay, this whole thing is, there we go. Now that I've like given up. Okay, so this goes, like I said, this is, this is all safety. The cover, the cover, this cover, this cover is all safety. And it also keeps things from going all over the place. So I've intentionally wrapped that. I've intentionally wrapped that up. I've intentionally wrapped this around here in extra time. And it's just magical how it happens. The magical fabric fairies come along and put that sucker up there like that. If you've been noticing, I sew a bunch of stuff. I stopped sewing. I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave the cover off because if it does what I'm I'm kind of hoping it does a certain thing, but if it does what I want it to do, then I'm gonna have to take the cover off to fix it. Actually, let's go. Ooh. Let's see. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's get the thread back on. Come on. That's something else that can happen too. While you're doing this, 
There we go. I swear to God, I managed to break some needles though. That part was nice. I was at, there's a thing that can happen if your needle gets a little bit bent, and then you start going to too much fab, too much thickness of fabric. Then you can end up with uh, your needle breaking in the fabric for no discernible reason. Okay, let's see. That should be fine. There's a piece of crap right there. Let's go through this crap. So one thing that you want to do when you're when you're oiling when you're oiling your machine. The first few times that you oil your machine, you're not going to notice this. But like over time, okay, let's see. Can you see it on this machine? Yeah, you're not really going to see it on this machine, I don't think. Yeah, over time, can I get in here just right? It's not really going to be visible because I'm not. Over time, because I because because I make sure that oil goes on this shaft, I, this, this guy just pops open, right? Because I make sure that oil goes on that shaft, um, over time, the dust will also collect in the oil on the shaft. So I, you got to clean that. So you'll have to, generally speaking, you want to come in and and give your, um, give everything a quick little wipe down. Take a scrap, take a scrap of fabric, wrap it around your finger, just give everything a quick little wipe. Make sure you, if you're using, if you're using enough oil that it's dripping back onto your fabric, you're using way too much oil. Um, you'll figure that out as life goes on. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see if we can. There's okay. That, so I've done it. I, I wrapped it around here a second time. It sometimes happens because watch the machine. It goes down. Let me see. Let me see. I got to I got to get my arms to go. It goes down. Then it gets loose. And that's normal. That's a normal part of its process. Mm -hmm. So every now and again, it may flip up and over. You never know when, where, or how. Sometimes the universe is just not your friend that day. There's probably there's probably some really specific reasons for it, but maybe, you know. Is it going to do it? Are you kidding me? Look at this. I am fucking this shit up on purpose, and it still this, this does not want to. Let's do that. Let's see what happens now. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this shit. It's sewing beautifully. <laughs> there's a little bit of there's a little bit of shit going on down here. There's a little bit of stuff. You can see how this isn't smooth. So every time, you know, this is um it's got some loose spots. There's some loose spots in the thread right there. Some more catches. So it is it is having a problem, right? You the problem it is it is having problems. I know me tugging on them is obviously making them worse, but here's the thing. I shouldn't be able to tug it that easily and make a loop come up. So it's definitely having problems. It's just not affecting the machine. Maybe it is cuz it's such a new machine. Like I kid you not, I only used the machine three or four times before we decided we'd had enough of it. Let's see. Let's see if we do it again. Oh, it's got an E1 error. So it was detect it was doing it was detecting something, just not enough to actually screw up how it was looking. But now I can tell when I run my fingers over it, that's smooth. This is smooth when I run my finger over it, that thread. But when I flip it over, it's bumpy. It's really bumpy. So there is a difference. There is a difference. It just didn't hang up and wreck itself the way I thought it was going to. This one doesn't require anything special to fix itself. Just uh, pull this backwards. Get that back to the top again. Rethread it. Rethread it. Here's another mistake you can end up making. Here's a huge mistake you can end up making because you won't notice it. This is this is the mistake that you can make and not really notice. And you, you usually notice right away. Okay, I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to thread the machine normally. Everything's fine. Everything. God, I'm almost doing it now. Okay, everything's fine. I thread the machine. Okay. What, I want to see if my little thing fell. This, this is supposed to help you guys. I, this is supposed to be draped over ever so nicely. So that you guys can not have things get in the way of seeing that needle properly. 
Not that I remembered. I forgot all about it until just now. Okay, so you do a stitch. You do a stitch or two. You do a stitch or two. You keep saying do a stitch or two for an hour. You just make a few stitches, right? Bring it up now. A lot now. Generally, generally speaking, when I'm when I'm in the pro, when I'm in the proper habit, I usually just pull it this far, and then snip it. But watch the thread. Watch the watch watch at the needle. See how see how the thread kind of bounces back a little bit. And then you put your next piece. Then you put your next piece on. You bring it down. But sometimes what happens? Sometimes what happens, and you don't even know it, is this little piece of thread. Sometimes, okay, so it's, it's bounced back and I have to grab it and whatever. And every now and again, every now and again, and I've had this happen, this piece of thread, come on, you're supposed to be up. Or every now and again, this piece of thread ends up going around. So it wraps around the needle one time. Can you see that? How it's wrapped around the needle one time? And generally speaking... Generally speaking, as long as you have enough thread here, you won't notice it. These are mistakes. Okay, that, now don't forget. Now, these are mistakes that are 100% out of your control. I got to pee. I got to pee like really bad. I'll be right back. I do this to myself at least once for every, every, every Tuesday. I am back. Okay. This is a through no fault of your own. The You pull the thread, you snip it, it snaps back, it flips around, you don't realize that it's happened. Quite often what you're, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see your thread sitting here and you're gonna go, okay, you're gonna give it, the, give it that little tug so you can start your next piece of fabric. And you just don't notice, look how, like, you guys are seeing, you got what you guys are seeing is much bigger than what I'm seeing. And I can't really, I can't, I know it's there, but I can't really see it. Ah, okay, I've had a pee. I'm good to go. Are you guys seeing that? Let's go slower. Oh, is it doing it? Okay, let's get this out of the way. Come on. I've got such a mess here. It's fine. Let's get that piece out of there. That, that's just the tail. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it did it. Okay, how did it fix itself? It fixed itself. It fixed itself. That's why it's... How did it fix itself? How could it fix itself? Let me do it again. Maybe it popped out. Did it? Did, it, did some ghosty come in my house and pop it out? That should have been a huge problem. Yeah, it's wrapped around. It's wrapped around. No, it's not. It's not wrapped around. It unwrapped itself. Let's see again. Okay, it's wrapped around. Like I said, I just even just look, see how it's just kind of hanging all crinkly and stuff like that? If it does that and you don't notice that it's managed to pop itself through there, let's do it one more time because that should not have been able to unwrap itself. How the hell did that happen? That's why it sometimes tangles and sometimes doesn't. I don't know. How could it... There we go.
Yeah, see, I must it must have I must have done a machine fairy. It must have because look how many layers are there now. Is it is it too close? I've got one, two, three. It's a fucking mess, is what it is, right? Whoops, I got needles falling out. We do not want that. Sorry, a little paranoid about that. Bruno especially explores everything by checking to see if it's edible first. So I really don't, I really get nervous about uh about uh, stuff like that. Okay, so basically what we've got going on, do I have anything that's a little bit better color? That's a better color. Yeah, look at that. That is all coming, those three threads are all coming off at the same time. Now that happens, that happens not necessarily in any, it happens, I've had it happen. I've had this happen more than once because you get a little bit of tension on the thread, just like an elastic, you get a little bit of tension on the thread as you're moving stuff around, doing whatever, whatever, whatever. It snaps back falls through that little gap because there is a little gap here, right? It snaps back through that little gap. You don't notice you keep going. You can get a little bit of pressure on it without noticing anything. And next thing you're doing, dealing with this. So let's see what it actually did. Let's see if it, let's see how bad it can get. Yeah. See it. See this in the back. Now that is just, that's just the tail. No, wait, that's the tail. What was that? Okay, let's see. How is that doing that? It was doing all sorts of weird fucked up shit. Anyway, man, the machine fairy certainly fucking hates me today. I'm doing this one more time because I will tell you right now, the knots and problems, whoop, and get that back up there, knots and problems and hassles I have gotten when that happens. Yeah, see, look at look at it right now. See how it's just kind of looped? See how the thread is just kind of looped and, and spinning up and stuff like that? That's when it happens. That's when you end up with shit like that going down and you just don't notice it. I just, I just do not know how I'm getting, an, I don't know how I'm getting a normal stitching here because that shouldn't even be possible. Well, I'm 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 liking this machine a little bit more. Wonder what happens. We thread the machine from back to front, from back to front, because you're not supposed to do that either. I mean, I can feel that it's not as good, but it's not. It's not falling apart the way it's supposed to. Okay, let's see what this one does. Oh. Okay, that's what's happening. Now that I'm actually looking for it. Okay, what happened here is it started to sew from back here. Whoops. Okay, what happened here, it started to sew from back here, but it didn't start catching until here because it didn't just, just did not want to work. Yeah, see the whole thing there. There, this is this is it right there. The whole thing is just not even in properly. That's what that does. That's weird though, because I kid you not, I have never been able to. Maybe it's the machine. Maybe maybe there's something about this machine that's managed to actually solve these kinds of problems. Because I have never had that happen. I cannot believe. I'm I'm liking this machine a lot more. I cannot believe that. I mean, these are reliable issues. These are issues that that reliably cause the same problems over and over and over again. Let's let's wrap. Okay, that's something else that can end up happening. Let's do this. Basically, what can end up? Basically, another way that this ends up happening is if you are using your is it? It usually wraps around before you. Um, it usually ends up wrapping around accidentally or otherwise because if you if you accidentally bring it like this and then like that. So it usually ends up wrapping around before you get to the end. I'm just going to I'm just going to show you guys my hands doing this blocking all it can get wrapped around at any point. Anyway, when that happens, the odds of the odds of knotting it up are really high, but I don't know why it's not succeeding today. I cannot believe failure after failure. I am failing at failing. How does that how how does one even do that? But uh no, this is uh, 
something else that can happen is you just forget. You pop, you pop in, you pop in your, uh, you pop in your bobbin, and you forget to do whatever it is that you're supposed to do with it. That's an easy one because your thread will just not catch. How much do you want that? It's gonna fucking catch. Caught beautifully. Well, it didn't actually. Okay, there's something to look at. If you don't do your bobbin properly, then it doesn't catch. Whoa, it doesn't catch properly. I got I to gotta watch this camera. If it's over the wrong spot in the wrong direction, it'll fall over. So this one here just kept doing its thing. But yeah, oh my God, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe how hard I'm trying to break things and nothing bad is happening. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna revive this this machine. I still don't I still can't use it for my purposes, but yeah, brother HC3110 is actually not that bad. Bit of a learning curve, but bit of a learning curve, but it seems fine. Seems fine. I can't I can't I can't get it to do half of the shit that I wanted it to do. Cause like I swear to God, like you know. Getting a getting a getting a wad getting a wad of uh, fabric caught in the corner there. Basically, when you're sewing, you got this. The needle goes into this slot right here, that slot. So sometimes when you're doing sometimes when you're doing a corner, what's over there? That's my stuff. My God, my frustration is starting to show, eh? So sometimes when you get into the corners, come on, get out of there, you. Don't worry. I'm not that kind of frustration. I'm, I'm trying to hurry because I want to get out. I've already been on for a while. Okay, so what ends up happening is sometimes you're going to be over here. You'll get to a corner. The needle comes down. The needle will come down and push into the fabric and push the entire thing into the machine. But it's not even doing it. I'm not sure why it's not doing it because it should I even adjusted the, uh, see, look at that. It should, this is, maybe it's a little bit smaller of a gap than a lot of machines have. I don't know, because this, following the machine all the way in, and I've even, I've even been trying to get it to do it on purpose, and it still won't do it properly, but you can end up with really bad knots. Let's see, this should, no, you should be fine to do that. Oh. Now why I want to do it. It knows that there's no foot on. How does it know that? Anyway. That's weird. I don't know what I did over there, but I enough knocked the button on the camera too. Anyway. Why are you not going? Off and back on with you then. Do, do, do. Yeah, see, it's sewing beautifully. It's not. It's not giving me any problems at all. There we go. Come on. Push it in. Push it in. Push it in. I can't get it to do my. I can't get it to do the bad things. This is. This is crazy. My God. Whenever I have ran, I have ruined entire projects. Yeah, this is a good. This is good for light work. It's not good for heavier work. Um. Because if you start going through, if you start going through too many layers, it the machine, the motor really doesn't want to play nice. It is not, I'll tell you right now though, like my my oh, this is gonna no, that's got a single point. Maybe it just doesn't have, okay. You know what? Maybe, maybe because it is going on lower power, lower, maybe because the machine's not as heavy duty, it's not as capable of ramming those bigger pieces in there. I don't know because it's not, it's definitely not doing anything with it. This is a good test for a machine. If it can, if it's not, if it's not sucking in your corners, look at that. Man, maybe I should have just been trying not to fuck with it, but I managed to break some needles. So that's a good thing. This is good for lighter work. Let's see. I, I, I cheated and I. I cheated and I held it down right there. I just I just I just pressed down so it can't move. See, 
it dug, it dug itself out. But that thunking noise, that tells you either that thunking noise that it's making. Yeah, I tried out a singer machine at the shop a couple of weeks ago, and that thing goes fast. I've, I've, I'll tell you right now that the singer quantum stylus is like my favorite machine of all time. That's my that's my absolute favorite. The thing I don't like about the thing I don't like about this one, and I've I've been trying to replicate it all afternoon, and I can't get it to do it. The thing I don't like about this one is that um, is that once you get once you get enough layers, and something else that happens too is, let me see if, you know what, I might be able to do it over in this section. Something else is, it, okay, this has got, this has got an area where I've already done a whole bunch of sewing in here, right? Um, yeah, you hear the thunk? It's just too thick. Now that's, okay, that thunk is the sound of the needle going through. The, the thunk, that thunking is the sound of the needle going through. Any machine is going to do that. Let's see. I'm going to take one last shot at breaking a needle with too thick a fabric. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to take one last shot and seeing if I can break the needle. I've got this. Is, this is the one I did all that stuff on earlier. So we're going to fold it in half again. Something that can happen. There's my thread. There's my thread. Yeah, I think the tip of the needle just tried to break. Sometimes, okay, over time your needle can be get a little bent and not quite line up the way it's supposed to, right? I tried to do this or I tried to do this at the beginning and it didn't want to do anything. The singer, the singer quantum stylus, I the singer, okay, my singer simple I liked as well. Had a lot less range of function. The singers have a heavier duty motor, which means that even the singer simple can I could do a two pocket, I could do it, I could do a two pocket bag on a singer simple. I can't do it on this one. Let's see. Let's see if it's bent enough. Well, let's uh, do. Nope, it just doesn't hate me enough. Sometimes when you sometimes when you have Basically, this is create this is creating a thickness to the fabric. Yeah, that heavy thunk, that heavy thunk can mean that. Are you hearing it? Now, like I said, I've I've had it's already been sewn through a whole bunch. I've got like about ten layers. I got about ten layers of fabric that's been sewn through really, really heavily. The thunk. Let's get this over here a little bit close. Let's bring my microphone over. I couldn't really bring it over much today, just because. But okay. That that is the thunking of the needle hitting the fabric. It means that it's obviously your needle's going to get super dull, super fast. Nothing and there's and depending on what you're sewing, you might not be able to do much about it. Why is it still going that way? Yeah, this one here is kind of going uphill. This one here, the fabric currently is going uphill. See how the see how the foot is done? I'm too close to the edge. So it is trying to go uphill. But you can also hear the machine. I, I'm, I'm adjusting the speed, but you can also hear the motor working a little harder to get that needle through. Thunk is coming from the needle. That needle, that needle is no, that needle will be no good in about another five minutes. <laughs> but I mean, I don't, I don't sew through this much stuff. But anyway, I gotta get going anyway. We'll see. If, and oh no, that was something else. That was the screw out of the back that just vibrated out for my little, for my little cover. My little cover came out. Okay, well, not as exciting as I thought it. 
actually kind of exciting, kind of exciting that a little tiny machine like this could survive this because these are reliably repeatable mistakes from other machines and it just didn't happen that way. So I have no idea what the fuck happened. This should have been a lot, this should have been a lot more, well, I'm, I came very close to breaking Lisa's camera. Was that a, was that a success? She gonna kill me? No, she's not. So anyway, anyway, well, it does prove what I've said before though, is that wrecking a machine is harder than you think. Sometimes even when you're trying, you can't make things go wrong. I can't think of any. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll tell you right now, though. Like, um, let's see. Oh, yeah. See? Oh, look at me pouring shit all over the countertop here. Do, do, do. Oh, do, do, do. Like even this guy here, this is the this is the this is the zipper foot off of my uh, Janome, and it's got a little safety hole right in the center, so I wouldn't be able to screw that. I wouldn't be able to do that one intentionally either. But uh, no, I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna be a lot. E I really did. I thought it was gonna be a lot easier to make shit happen. I'm kind of happy that it wasn't. It means the technology and machines has gotten better. What to do about it? And I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't. I know Gail would have noticed, but. What? Because you know you've been you've been there and done you've been there and done all that, but the there is the cure for almost every problem that goes wrong is the exact same steps. Get the get the fabric out. What I, the one thing that I was trying to do was get one of these in here so stuck that you have to like do all sorts of shit to get it out. But dig it out from the top. Dig it out from the bottom take this piece off and make sure there's no loose thread laying around inside. If something affects up here like that, like when I, when I intentionally got that, that thread all fucked up in there, then you may have to take the cover off the cover, the, the cover, no matter how awkward it is on your machine, the cover should never require you never require you to use force to get it back on or take it off. So if you're if you're doing if you're dealing with the cover and it's not quite doing what you want it to do, then just keep in mind that fiddle with it but don't force it. That's about the only the because the cover you can sew without the cover, but it's a it is a safety feature. You really do need to keep it on. Um but it's the exact same steps. Like I will not, I'm, I'm going to throw away this needle when I'm, I'm going to throw away this needle after thunking through thunk, 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 thunk. When you're doing a regular project of your own, then you definitely, I just spilled. Oh, I can use that. Cause that's a piece of scrap. I just spilled. I just, I almost knocked over my pop and got a little spill back here. Um, when you're, um, if I'm hearing that thunk, 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 thunk. I'm stopping. I'm going to stop and find out what went wrong because I'm, I'm, it is nearly impossible to be in a situation where there's only two reasons why you're in a situation like that. One, you're doing something like me. You're either, you've either got too many layers of fabric or maybe there's something, maybe there's something going on that's not supposed to be there. If it's just, if you've got, if you've got a bunch of fabric, nothing else is happening everything's fine and it's talking like that it could be that your needle's getting dull um getting dull or it's misaligned now don't forget i was i had my i had my pliers out and was like bending this a little bit i was hoping to get the kind of bend that makes it that guarantees a break but i just couldn't get it to do it so if your needle is starting to bend it's going to thunk 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 a lot more often so if you're just going through two layers of fabric and it's making that sound, probably change the needle. And you'll be able to tell when you're when you're sitting here at your machine and it's going thunk, 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 you're gonna be able to tell if it's coming, if it's coming from here, it's your needle working really hard to force it, force its way through some fabric. And if it sounds like it's coming from up here, it could be that you've got um, something going on with your machine. Maybe you've got it, maybe your tangle is up here because um, your machine your thread is partially broken inside or whatever. Nothing, 
as long as your machine is, and don't forget as long as your machine is under warranty it's not your problem as long as you're not doing things you shouldn't be doing but uh anyway 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 i spilled pop i gotta clean it up now don't worry i didn't spill it on anything that matters and i have plenty of scrap around here so i'm just cleaning it up with a i'll come back and wash it properly in a few minutes i have all that scrap that i just abused the crap out of today but uh no, that, that sound, like, okay, when it comes to nesting, you're going to get a particular, the sad part with nesting is that if you're pushing the fabric away from you and you're like, sit, depending on how you're sitting, you may not know, you may not notice that nesting is happening, but nesting is just because your bobbin's inside, inside out or upside down or something, something. If you have a really bad nest that forms a solid chunk, that could cause a problem. Don't never be afraid, never be afraid to change your needle. Um, I don't change it nearly as often as I should, but that's fine. Never be afraid to open up your machine. My favorite, my favorite tools are to keep a pair of pliers handy. Keep a pair of pliers handy, a stitch ripper handy, a pair of scissors. Okay, the pliers, if you have access to pliers, tweezers, tweezers, stitch ripper, and scissors for sure. Super, 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 okay, scissors, right? And then scissors. See the difference? These, I never, I never use these unless I'm really, really, really trying to do some, I'm, I'm only using these if I'm trying to cut out some fabric that's, uh, or unless I've got both machines going, whatever, but I don't use those unless I have to. A screw, okay, the... The shitty screwdriver that comes with the machine, even if it's a, even if it's shitty and not working for you, don't whatever whatever shitty screwdriver because they're all shitty. Trust me, whatever crappy screwdriver comes with your machine, don't get rid of it. Even if you have one of your own, this is my I keep one of my own handy. Even if you have one of your own, don't get rid of the crappy one because every now and again you might have to go after something that's got a weird angle that a regular screwdriver won't get to. Um. I keep a long screwdriver handy. This is something they don't tell you because this piece here, come on, back over here. This piece here, I can't get it. I can't get it to it from this angle. Come on. And again, fiddling, yes. Yeah, some of, and some of these little cases, some of these little some of these little covers are incredibly fiddly to get at. They're fiddly as fuck, but they're not bad. A long screwdriver because if you have to take if you have to take this off, you are not getting look at this, look at this, look at this. I'm just getting shit out of my own way. La 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 okay. This is the hole that it's going into. I mean, this is the screwdriver they give you. This is the screwdriver they give you. This is the hole you've got to get into by that deep. You've got to get it. You've got to get like three inches deep. This is a three inch deep hole that you have to get into so that you can screw in this screw to hold on that. I tell you right now, this is. This was made, th th these machines, the original sewing machine has to have been created by some sort of a design student who knows nothing, nothing wrong, nothing wrong with asking the hubby or somebody who owns tools to do this part for you. But if you're in the middle of a project and you have to stop, they are, they're shitty screwdrivers. I do not know, I do not know why they provide those. I don't know why they have them together the way they do. Come on. Come on. Am I doing it right? Is it going in? Is it me or is it the screwdriver? No, that's right. Anyway. I need I need a I need a star screwdriver and this is a flat one. I'll figure that out later. Anyway. So what you want. Tools of the trade, abs absolutely, absolutely, okay, not absolutely required. If you have, so if you don't sew often enough and you have a helpful person in your world that, that has a few tools, 
then you might not want to bother. But if that matters, to, if being able to do any of this matters to you, you're going to want a long screwdriver and the, the head, you need the head to match whatever is back here so that you can get into your machine. This one is a door. This one, my Janome over here, it's a door. So that one's really convenient. It's dusty, but it's a door, which I really like most machines. That's the that's the only machine I've ever, this is the only machine, the Janome here is the only machine I've ever had that's a door. Every single other machine I ever required, that's why I keep this in my toolbox. That's why I keep this in my sewing kit. I keep this around as sewing equipment. So what do we got now? We got we got this stitch ripper. This stitch ripper. I've already thrown away the fabric. The ball on this stitch ripper lets you go between two layers of fabric and cut without cutting the fabric. This one that comes with the machine does not let you do that, but it lets you get into it. Get lets you get into here beautifully to dig things out. So keep the shitty screwdriver. Keep the shitty screwdriver just in case, but get your own as well. Get keep the. This isn't as shitty. This isn't as shitty as you would think it is. Everybody gets one of these and they go, "Oh, this is so shitty. I can't use this for anything." It's like, yes, you can because it's. They're these are almost always finer. See how they're finer. So if I need to dig underneath, if I need to dig underneath to get to the um, bobbin thread to, to snip it from the machine, it's handy dandy. Yeah, if you've got a door, if you've got if yours is a door, then you're you've already won half the battle. Um, Pair, a good pair of tweezers, a a pair of long a pair of needle nose pliers, or at the very least access to them, because sometimes when your needle breaks, it's still in the thread. And being able to like grab the needle, if you have to grab that, if you have to grab that broken, if you have to grab that broken needle tip, you are going to appreciate having access to this if you have that. Good pair of scissors. Yeah, and something soft to clean the machine with, a soft brush of some kind. That's my recommended toolkit. That's that's my rent. This is my recommended basic tool. Oh, the scissors, you know, everybody knows the scissors. Everybody knows the stitch ripper. But the tweezers, the, the tweezers, the pliers, the screwdriver, those, and keeping the little itty bitty one, itty bitty stitch ripper that comes with the machine. Those are my those are my add-ons. Anyway. I also grabbed that just in case. I also grabbed, I also happened, I happened to have a pair of these. I grabbed those just in case because I was really had some high hopes that I was going to be able to just, just cause mayhem today. I did not cause nearly enough mayhem. It made me sad. But uh, and I do not know why. This is something else. This is something else that confuses me about this machine. It has this on it, right? And in most machines, it's a door that opens for holding extra stuff. And this is just fake. I don't know why that's. And I guess this is all the accessories. Let's see if they fit. Okay, 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 that'll work. The baggie of accessories will fit there. But anyway. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me, even though I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do. Ooh, I'm back. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. I wasn't able to do as much damage as I thought I was going to be able to do today, which is really unfortunate. It really, it really is. It really is. I was hoping to show more than I could show, but, but I still have every intention of whenever I happen to be doing regular sewing on my regular stuff, I still have every intention of stopping and Whatever I'm doing, showing you guys how to fix it or what I've done to fix it or what works and what doesn't work. But, <coughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it is a shitty screwdriver. I don't know. I do not know why they add those kind of tools because they are next to useless. They, they need to come up with something better. But I guess they're designing, they're designing tools for people who they assume are sewing and don't know how to use tools. And it's like, that's okay. But anyway, I should be hearing from the wife soon. And I got to get all this stuff put away. It's not as big a mess as I thought it was going to be, though, because I was really hoping for way more mayhem. I only managed to break, what, three needles? I only broke three needles. That was not, that just was not okay. Was that? 
I forget where that one goes. I have got this massive accessory pack of sewing needles, I mean sewing feet, that I can't use for my Janome. I cannot use any of this on my Janome because my Janome is a nine millimeter, nine millimeter foot, and these are seven, and my other machines are all seven millimeters. So yeah, I can't do that my, very much, but that's okay. I was hoping for, I was hoping for one big giant killer 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 knot to, to end with and that didn't happen so now i'm sad but that's okay i will get over it i'm actually right now oh shoot lisa's gonna be walking in the door any minute now what happened there oh because i already turned it off <laughs> i turned off the other camera already i turned off the other camera already so i can Hey, hey, well, that sucks. Okay, I screwed up my cam. I screwed up which camera is which. I screwed up which camera is which, but the sound is still there. So I'm going to say goodbye now. Uh, it's not like I've never clicked the wrong camera button before. I'm going to say goodbye now, finish cleaning all this mess up. I turned off the wrong camera. I screwed up my camera, so now I can now I have no camera. I turned off the camera. I turned off the other camera, but left my sound here. It's okay. I am just here now. I am here in my ethereal form. But I'm gonna get going. Lisa's gonna be home any second now. I'm actually working, I've actually been working on her quilt for the last couple of days. So I gotta get back to work at that. And I gotta get back to work at everything else. But I'm just tidying up my shit. I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm going to say goodbye, turn the camera off, take the, take that needle out of that machine because I know the next time I use that machine, that needle is going to blow up in my face. And yeah, I crap me up too. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, great. Okay, there it is. And I had to find my mouse pad again so I could actually use my mouse and close things down. I'm going to get going, guys. You guys have a great day. I will see you on Friday for the next one. Ah, crap, crap. It's all the same blue. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I'm going to get going. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.